So hello, we are here today with Yvette Dantremont, also known as the Psy Babe. I'm Anna Maltese. Um, Yvette, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you first heard about Politicon? It's well, uh, I'm as you just said, I'm, I'm the Psy Babe. I, I run a website that's mainly uh, science and dirty jokes because I figure if you're going to talk about science, uh, you may as well tell a fucking dick joke because I'm competing with funny pictures of cats and pornography when I'm on the internet. So why not make right. the science a little bit funny? Um, that and I'm debunking a bunch of assholes who tell you that green juice can cure cancer. I'm like, no, it fucking can't. Uh, so again, I, I try to make the science funny and relatable, and again, dick jokes. But I'm also a bit of a political junkie. I've uh, volunteered on two elections, and I, I love uh, politics because I think uh, I, I think they're you know it's fucking important. And I love going to things like Politicon uh, because you sometimes get to meet some of the people that you've seen so much about. And Anna posted on Facebook. Now Anna and I hadn't met before. I knew her boyfriend. Uh, but Anna and I hadn't met, and from from across the internet, I you know we'd slowly be gotten. To we admire. looked at each other it's, across a crowded room, and it was it's there was there was there was girl romance right away. And it's, it's when she posted about Politicon, I'm like, oh, she's she's not just someone who posts about politics occasionally. She likes she likes going to. Oh, I, I, you had me at hello, Anna. <laughs> you had me at hello. So. <laughs> She wanted to go to Politicon, and I was like, I want to go. And number one, we went to see uh, Lady Parts Justice League, which I, I want justice for my Lady Parts. And this is a group of badass, motherfucking, wonderful comics who are headed up by Liz Winstead. Co-creator co of The Daily Show. Oh, yeah. I found out about, I found out that Politicon existed um, when I was just browsing news feeds on WAPO or yeah. something, something. And um, at first I thought it was a joke. <laughs> like, where, where would this, where would this ever happen? How would this ever happen? It yeah. can't exist. And how is, how are all these people here? In, and it was in Pasadena. It was in Pasadena. And we hadn't heard about it. We hadn't heard about it. It was the second annual one. So oh, one of oh, them went the by without any of my friends it's, letting me know about them. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's um, a bunch of my libertarian friends were there. <laughs> and it's, I think they missed that I was going to it. Either that or they're so mad at me that I'm a yeah, Hillary supporter now that we're well, like, we're not talking to you that um, <laughs> it's we'll touch on that later it's, don't think we well, won't um, so the lineup uh was nuts oh gary johnson and and I'm, I'm looking at the website and i'm like this is looking like it's an actual legit thing yeah but gary johnson uh, john mcafee uh like wendy davis wendy da Wendy fucking Davis. There was a panel um, with Ann Coulter and Van Jones. They even were oh hyping God. the panel with like, who do you prefer, Ann or Van? Oh and God. everybody it's, was like, what there that? was there was a Sarah Palin talk which you got to go to. I did not. Um, yeah, it's you can tell you I can did. speak more to that one. But the the James Carville Sarah Palin thing that like, was the I, highlight. It's, I needed a fucking cigarette after that, and I do not smoke. <laughs> but man, that was good. We met our new best friend, Michael fucking Steele. It's former. Wait, I'm, Head of the RNC. I so we we decided like on on the Facebook thing to to go, and I I had been assuming that it was all sold out. Um, nope. However, apparently it was not, <laughs> and tickets were thirty dollars for a day. Thirty bucks. So all something something is crazy. Oh yeah, I'm I'm oh, totally oh. I'm getting my agents to check if I can speak at it next year with a nut <laughs> job anti like I anti uh, GMO liberal because man that'll be some fun. Uh, that and it's it, I may have just peed a little. So I got there, and uh, I it, and I gotta say the whole thing is is not only populated by politicians and people in that realm, but oh, by yeah. comedians. Oh yeah, and. And it's build, and and the, and this was what floored me, especially in this day and age oh, when yeah. everything is so polarized, as a place where just hey, if you like politics, come and enjoy. It's and they and said it's like the political, it's the non-political po political convention. It's a weird, wacky, everyone's here right. political convention. It's like with it's it's a lot like they they were billing it as Coachella on their website. Yeah, it's not. It's a lot like. Comic Con. Yeah, it's like if it's like, do you just like getting hyped up over politics? Well, we've got yeah. the convention for you. It was a geek convention. Oh, it was so and there were people in dressed uh, first of all doing cosplay, oh, yeah. not just as uh, Donald Trump, not just as Bernie Sanders, but Rince Priebus. Oh yeah. And it's, so you you had were, the spectacle of the former RNC chair 
meeting somebody cosplaying the current one. Oh yeah. And there it's... were people there in like, you know, with I'm with her, there were people, you know, like feel the burn, I... and there were people in Donald Trump hats, which oh, yeah. I have not seen in I... real life before. No, it, well we do kind of live in Southern California. We're not That's in the right true. place. But I I had not <laughs> seen a Trump hat other than on... species out here. No, oh, yeah, it's there it's there we had not seen a Trump hat in like not other than on a news clip where they're interviewing people going, right. So what crazy shit are you gonna say that I can <laughs> use to make you look like an asshole? Because it's so easy. Like that's that's the only place where I've seen a Trump hat yet. So yeah, I hadn't so even thought was, about that. Yeah, and it was crazy. And the the amazing thing was, everybody was just milling around yeah. companionably. And no nobody was walking up to people going, "You believe in this person? I hate you." Like it's like Hillary and Bernie supporters who probably like some of them were probably still. If you were at this thing wearing a Bernie thing, you're probably a Bernie or Buster. Just just a guess, I could be wrong. Or you're, you know, just wanting to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Nobody was yelling. At one point, you had a conversation with a libertarian mayor of a small town yes. who would, it, it, you know, there was a bit of arguing, but it ended amicably. Like, it, it was- as, It was interesting because it went, it went it, there, it went and then as, as soon as it did, we were like, oh shit, oh God, I'm so sorry. It, and it was, it was that, it was yeah. that like, that Warner Brothers uh, chipmunks. Oh no, you're too kind. Oh no, I, by all means, after you. Yeah. But I think that's and and I'd, I'd like to hear your take on this because um, to me, that's something that I think, uh, and and I'm 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 well aware that there is dis that there is probably disagreement on this. But I tend to, for me personally, I tend to approach politics as as a sport. It's it, they, they do say it's sports for nerds. The thing is, I see it a little differently, but close. The thing is, it is sports that has the capacity to decide whether I live or die, hmm. and so even when I'm approaching it as a sport, um, it's it's in order to keep this thing fun. It's the approach for me has to involve some form of um, not. Because uh, I because I lived through the Bush years mm. and every gray hair on my head is as a direct result. Yeah, many. Uh, it's, the, um, it, it, it still looks fabulous. I'm <laughs> just saying. You. But but you know what I'm saying? Like like the, those were dark days. Mm. And I, I was my the 9/11 uh, happened the second week that I was in college. Like I was a, an 18 year old college freshman and I was living in Boston at the time. Mm. And it's funny the guy who ended up being my first landlord out of college. He he had been working as an air traffic control at Logan, he was the one who cleared the planes uh, to leave Logan. He had a heart attack that day because that will make you have a fucking heart attack. Like, and I, it's funny, like my, I, I lived in an in-law apartment. I know this is a total aside, uh, but I had an in-law studio in like the basement of their house and his wife at one point said, yep, he hasn't been the same since then. Like I, it's, those are little things that you don't hear about and you can't, like, what do you, like he had no, he didn't know who was getting on the plane. He was sitting in a tower uh, doing his job. Yeah. And like, what do you, what do you think when you clear the planes to leave that day? And like, we were in Boston. We didn't know what was gonna come next. All we've been told was America is under attack. Something had landed in, in a field in Philly. DC was next. Something had gotten attacked in New York. We're like, we're in Boston. We're 18. We don't know shit about shit. Like, we were we were pretty scared. And like, I saw like, you know, going from 18 year old college kid and the world is our oyster and free speech is a thing uh, to like, like the world slowly started changing as I was an adult. And this is, it's, I, I think it changed. Um, I, I think having that happen after I was an adult is kind of why people about my age see things a little differently than the people that are defined as millennials. Like it's why there's a little bit of a flip between like between me, the Gen Xers, like, or the, you know, stereotypical Gen Xers and the millennials. Like I call us like, we're that little bitty like lost generation of, yeah. of you know, how we're defined is like, we're kind of, if there is a Gen Y, everything got a little, like, I don't want to say dystopian, but everything got a little, Oh no! It it went. <laughs> Everything got very different. Um, I gotta say, the first thing, at, and I'm very sorry, uh, but after the the after the initial shock of like, holy shit, there are people. Um, the first one of the first things, one of the first things yeah. that came to me was, we are so fucked because yeah. this is the exact wrong group of people to be dealing with this right now. It's I, I was watching. And then you saw yeah. the Patriot Act, and then you saw. Yeah, you know, all these civil liberties started getting 
started getting yep. curtailed. And you saw like John Ashcroft calling for a a, a, a list of Muslims. Like, yeah. uh, like no, we we don't do that. No, we and don't. It, and there's still that. It's it's funny, and there's still that attitude uh, that's pervasive through you know. Never mind just Republicans, but my sane like my very sane friends of mine who aren't even that political, who are you know you know all over that uh, all over the place politically, think yeah we should be tracking them. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? What's wrong with you? Like these are <laughs> these are your fellow Americans, um, and the fact that you give and I mean they've started to say this you know this is a thing that's kind of started to happen. If you give away a little bit of your civil liberties because you want to be a little bit more safe, and I'm I'm not saying get rid of the metal detectors at airports. No 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But I'm saying if you say go ahead and track our emails, go ahead and have warrantless wire tappings we as much as we love to protect our first amendment rights which we do as much as people love to scream about their second amendment rights do you understand that there's a fourth amendment <laughs> right to un undo uh searches and seizures I you're giving it was one and two it's, it was just one and two we don't know it's like there's also one about uh, putting soldiers into your houses too but nobody talks about that one for some fucking reason because we're in the 21st century not the you know not not we're, we're a few centuries removed right. from when a bunch of old slave owners were writing the laws to to construct this country but moving the fuck on there is a fourth amendment and it's talking about undue searches and seizures a, a lot of politicians on both sides of the aisle just want to keep the fucking ship afloat but because things got so crazy after 9-11, it's right. hard to say, I want to go to work. And even though I see things a little differently than, you know, my friend on the other side of the aisle, I want to work with them and compromise and come to a solution without people, uh, without it being a huge nutty media thing, without it being a circus and going, oh, you said compromise. That means you're not being true to your, shut the fuck up and learn how democracy works. Well, also learn how politics works. It's yeah. called the art of compromise exactly. for a reason. And it stings sometimes. So it really does. You don't get everything you want. The um, whole, well, I mean, even going back to Johnson, you know, yeah. Medicare was supposed to be for all. The compromise was retirement age with the promise that we would revisit it uh, down the line and yeah. open it up to everybody. And when the, when when the Affordable Care Act was being debated, everybody who, you know, was on the side of yes, you know, was like uh, single payer. Yeah. We'll have that where like I I was like, okay, let's finally open Medicare up for all. Yeah. That that would be And you have the we option already have, to buy in. Right. And and we already have the structure there. It's all you know, we you build on existing structures to evolve. And that's what evolution is about. Yep. Um but with the with the makeup of Congress, even with a majority of Democrats mm -hmm. in the Senate, you still had Ben Nelson, and you still had all. Well, I mean, governor at that yeah. time, but but uh, you you had people like him, and you had people in the Democratic Party who were who were against the oh, idea, yeah. and that's been... what we had at the time. And there's been so much fear for so long about it's well if you let everyone have it it's socialism and then it's bad. Right. It's like here's <coughs> firefighters. I, <coughs> like all my relatives live in uh, mainly in Nova Scotia and I had one of my cousins gave uh, birth to twins. And um, one of the little twins they saw on on the ultrasound there was a heart condition, a serious heart condition. Basically this little baby was born almost without chambers in her heart and they knew she was going to need surgery within like a week of being born. She needed over the course of the first 3 3 years of her life three major open heart surgeries and there were other complications uh you know with along with that but it was one of the surgeries God, was rough. oh yeah that that's scary for a family to go through because when she was first born they're like we don't know what's going to happen like that's and that's not a US or Canada thing that's a this is a crazy complicated surgery can you imagine going through that and going fuck we have a hundred thousand dollars in medical bills like that one surgery like that alone can put a family back fifty thousand dollars in co-pays like they added up how much it would have cost them uh, for all the surgeries if they hadn't been living with universal health care and I think it was about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to keep their child living I think the, the worst complaint is if you have a thing like a knee surgery you need you might take another month to wait for it but you know what I needed a hip surgery in the US and because the only surgeon that was the right guy for it was really high in demand because he was a great hip surgeon uh, I, there was over a six month wait for that I only got in a little bit earlier a two month wait uh, because somebody canceled their surgery <laughs> so I've had to wait for surgeries in the US thank you that person the best response I, I saw during the healthcare debate was from Stephen Hawking because and I don't remember which uh, politician it was who said this <laughs> but they said 
if Stephen Hawking had been born in Britain and had been subject to socialized medicine, we would not have him around today. And Stephen Hawking responded, um, he is British. It, it was because of the national health system that he was allowed to live. And he said, um, actually, everything you're saying is wrong. Oh, you mean um, you said, actually, everything you are saying is, is wrong. wrong. Oh, God, we are so awful. It's, so, I, I love you, Stephen. But, <laughs> just saying. I, I love the fact that Stephen Hawking has gone to strip clubs in his free time. Oh, yeah? That's, yeah, that's nice. That's, that's, that's He's gone like, to strip clubs and... Into into space into yeah. a low Earth orbit. It's I mean if, if you're Stephen Hawking, yeah, fucking cool. go to strip clubs. So Politicon was um, everything, oddly enough, that it was billed as being. It was yeah. by geeks for, for geeks. geeks, and people from all across the political yeah. spectrum of today it's were there. The it's far to the le- really far to the left, really, really far, far to, to the, the right. right. Like people in Donald Trump hats were walking with. People with Bernie Sanders T-shirts. People in uh, like I Wendy saw, Davis and Gary Johnson t- were budding around. And I, I saw people holding Ted Cruz 2016 uh, things. There was and they, that too. And they, and they were already. It, it wasn't even Ted Cruz for human president things. It was actual <laughs> Ted Cruz 2016. I'm like, oh damn, there. These are some holdouts. Yeah, and that was really. It, fun. It was kind of political peace in the universe. Like there were probably arguments, but it was kind of arguments in the in the spirit of conversation and ideas. So the first thing I got to see, besides uh, people watching, <laughs> everybody walking around together happily, um, Cats which and was dogs living together, mass hysteria, which was awesome, was. Um, <sighs> And I have to, I have to put a disclaimer in front of this. I swear, I swear upon Theodore Roosevelt's spectacles. I was in line to see a live taping of Left, Right, and Center for noon at eleven fifty three with seven <laughs> minutes to go. Um, my feet uh, just f- were taken over by something, bum, and bum, 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 they they marched bum, me out of the hall bum, bum, bum. and across the street to Independence Hall to see. Sarah Palin, and I'm not proud of bless. saying... Yeah, right. To, um, May the good Lord that we don't believe in bless you, my child. <sighs> Praise, Jesus. Praise. She was uh, scheduled to... She, she had an hour slot. She, um, she did uh, come on stage 15 minutes late and depart 20 minutes early I, without taking any questions. I, I feel like that might have been on purpose. You think? I'm just saying, I don't know if Sarah has much to say other than, other than, you know, oh, um, Obama and, and there or what, and Trump, America, great again, wall. Like, I think that's pretty much her <laughs> entire talk. We get in there and it was pretty much the same crowd that, that yes. were, were in that when we go, when we went yeah. to see the later one. Um, I sat down in the back row and the game that I was playing with myself was uh, which are the true believers and which are the rubberneckers. <laughs> and, you know, it's a fun game at that place because there are people from all political stripes. There are people in Bernie t-shirts and, and you know, blue streaked hair and, you know, just, you know the, the young hipsters. Um, and there were people in Trump hats and t-shirts there to see the talk. So th- we're all here to watch... The spectacle live that we have seen for the past eight years they, on our computer monitors they should or have said, they your should have, televisions. They should have been giving you popcorn when you came in. I'm just saying. We really should have. Well, I think the popcorn should have been for the James Carville oh, interview because oh my God. Um, here's. God, that was grand theater. So here's carry the on. thing. It was what. It, there were no surprises. That's um, so if, sad. if you were looking for for surprises, there were none. Um, and it was like, okay, and that was when that was when it began to feel like a setup. But about 10 minutes oh. after that, um, yeah, because we're you know we're all there. We're all seeing we're okay, well, what's gonna happen? That's, she's saying the same shit. It's the same it's the same thing. We can play the Sarah Palin Mad Libs home version. Uh, by this point, uh, like anybody who came a voting age in, in 08 can, can oh, play the same thing. It's like, oh, it's oh, freedoms and, you know, whatever. It's, right. Uh, yeah. Establishment. Yeah. And, so, yeah. Something. Lamestream media. And 
And Katie Couric, mm, oh, we'll, get, we'll get into yeah, that. Yeah, we'll <laughs> get into that. Um, so about 10, tw- 10 minutes into this, um, me and the two uh, ladies next to me were doubled over in laughter because we're like, this is all there is. This is amazing. This is it. And this is all Aww. that there ever shall be. And yep. and uh, so, so that happened, that occurred. Um, and afterward, what was interesting was a reporter approached me from the Daily News. <laughs> and he said, I saw you laughing. I, would you like to... May I interview you? And I said, sure. So he he sat down and he said, the first question out of his mouth was, so why do you think that people still keep giving Palin opportunities to speak? And, oh, irony, <laughs> thy name is the fourth estate. So I'm like, well, that's a very good question. Um... Why are you here? <laughs> I can think of so many reasons why they keep giving her reasons to speak. Yeah, because and people love to fucking laugh, man. It's because they we come love for the to show. React. And and he and he laughed and he said, "Well, that's a good question." And I said, "So so why are you here?" And he said, "Well, my editor sent me." And I said, "So why did your editor send you to cover Sarah Palin?" And he said, "Well." because she's so unpredictable, you never know what's going to come out of her mouth next. Uh, and I said, however, I'm going to disagree with that. <laughs> I don't think that's why we go see her. Um, I wanted to see her live to simply to like, holy shit, is this going, is this, yeah. I, I did slip into that it's in the real. moment. <laughs> but when you're covering her and you're writing down her words, you, it's, it's, and I told him this, it's noun, verb, adjective, misplaced adverb, emphasis on the incorrect syllable, and there you go. You can write a Sarah Palin speech. You know what words to fill in. Yeah, it's like, and it's kind of the proof that I think, and I hate to use, actually, no, I love to use comedy as proof of this. Whenever a comedian does a Sarah Palin sketch, sometimes they don't even write the sketch. They just do her actual fucking (laughs) speech, and it's funny. Sarah Palin, I don't think... The joke is that Sarah Palin doesn't know how funny she is. Like, that's the best part about this. Like, if she... I, I, right. I, almost, I almost wonder sometimes if she knows. Because that could... Because, I mean, she did. She did. She ran... Uh, she, she worked as a mayor of a, of a small city. Uh, she ran a fucking state... Okay, it's just Alaska. So it's the side of, size of Richmond, Virginia. Republicans don't get too comfortable in me saying nice things about her. It's not going <laughs> to last. But I wonder if she's... In, sometimes if she's in on the joke and she knows... And she's like, fuck it, people are laughing. I like money. Let's just let's melt this shit. Like that's that's a possibility. I don't think it's a big one, but you know what? You know who's laughing more than all of us? Sarah Palin and her goddamn mansion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I if she if she is capable of getting people to show up to her talk when she can arrive 15 minutes late and tw- or, and leave 20 minutes early. God, if I could do that for the talks that I charge money for, like, oh, I'd do that every day. No, I wouldn't. I'm try not being racist. Maybe that. <laughs> it's, no, it's like I don't try being no, racist. Don't. It's I, I don't I don't recommend it. Like it's you, it's you, no. You sleep uh, better at night trying to not be racist. Yeah, it's it's better yet. Just don't be a person who has to best. try to not be racist. Yeah. But I wonder if one day she's gonna go. I have to up the uh, up it for my show because only white people go to the these things anyway so let's just let's drop a let, let's drop a, a mexican's joke on something and say donald trump was right about that wall because mexicans are bad like i'm waiting for that well, to come from her she touched on that she, she did touched on that actually and here's here's my here's my quick capsule take um sarah palin i feel to an extent there is there is one strain of this in which i felt sorry for her in 08 Aww. because she was plucked from alaska yes alaska is not the continental united states it's... um i've i've been up there it's filled with alaskans <laughs> who are many of whom are very nice people um some of whom are eccentric i presume and that's they're fine. not bringing crime Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. But she was she was plucked out of there as as the governor of a of a state that is it's... quite remote and prides yeah. itself on doing its own thing, 
um, to be part of a ticket that was a national campaign it's... on an historic level. Oh, yeah. And she was not prepped for it whatsoever. No. It's, well, who the fuck, and I'm, I'm, let's be blunt about this, who the fuck is prepped for, for being right. president? Right, okay, that, that is an, ins- that's a good point. That is an, ins- like, I mean, I, and I mean, I know what I do is a microcosm of, of being in front of people, but like, I went, my I had a, an article go viral, and uh, so, suddenly I was getting hundreds of emails a day right. and press requests, and I'm like, ah, that is a tiny, 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 itsy bitsy little fraction of what it must be like right. to uh, to to have people vetting you for the hardest job on the planet. Like I said, tiny right. fraction. I'm not saying that any, I'm in any way comparable to that, but like, but it does give you an insight it into gives, oh yeah to what that level of people wanting to delve into your life is like. So I almost almost have have empathy for that because it's like okay, she didn't realize. Like nobody quite realizes, unless you've been working in politics for years and years, how much people are going to just pound into your life uh, when you're in front of a national campaign like that. You know, after the autopsy of the campaign, Steve Schmidt came out and was like, mm. we tried, we tried our best, but yeah. she would not uh, take yeah. notes. She would not. But at the same time, it's like that's what's worked for her so long. Yeah. And to be asked to suddenly be a completely different person, I I do have, I have I have sympathy for that. And it was mm. there was a more self reflective person might have said, "Hey, I am not cut out for this job." It's, but at the same time. I don't know. It's like, I, I remember they tried using the proof uh, that she was a really good basketball player in high school to say that, look, she's a fighter. I'm like, really? I'm like, I I, I played volleyball in college. I don't think I'm ready to, to you know, lead the free world. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's, also. It's Ob- not evidence. Obama has really good game. I'm just, I think Obama could take court. her on the basketball court. Like, I think he could. It's, I'm, I'm just saying. It's. That's just that. This he's he's got good arms. Actually, Michelle could I've, probably. I've seen him shoot too, and he like he's way. Anyway, so Let's, we're just tangent. Yeah. You know, she she had a rough introduction, and once that happened, it's, first yeah, of all, in, let's say independently of all the shit we disagree with her on, right? She was not rolled out very well. Like no. she she just kind of bang in front of three hundred million people. Go. Good luck. Oh, we're right. not going to take the time to to talk over how you do this. Just go. It was a rough. It was it was a rush job, on um the 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 job that is waiting for the president yeah. to die, and take over the country, <laughs> and she was they, put on the ticket with a seventy two year old man, so. I'm just saying. Uh, um, yeah, this was not so, this was not well planned at couple all. Couple that with a personality which is, ad, by her own admission, highly competitive, but also incredibly thin-skinned. Yeah, it's like you need to like you need to be able to take people saying shit about you because like even no matter yeah. how big your audience is, if you have an audience of anyone who's more than just your family, and even then your family is talking shit about you, I'm just saying. Uh, like, if you have an audience of more than just your BFFs and your family, they're talking shit about you. Turn it into the entire uh, country. <laughs> Get used to it. I'm just saying. They're all going to have different opinions from you. If you, like, there was a great clip on, it was either the Daily Sh- I, no, it was, uh, it was last week tonight, saying here are offenses that once upon a time were thought of as horrible things. And one of them was Al Gore sighing, yeah. and one was uh, George Bush Sr. Uh, looking at his watch. Oh my God, how naive we it's, were. Uh, like, I, I remember when we thought Joe Biden was a gaffe machine. Oh, we were so naive. How, na- how naive Days we were. Innocence. How naive we were. So, but unfortunately, people like Sarah Palin get asses in seats. Like people, and I don't know if people can separate out the great entertainment value from the fact that we need somebody to do this huge job of running the country. And like right. this, the presidenting thing is, I, I look at it as kind of a job of working with a lot of moving parts. And this is why uh, people like Obama, people like Hillary, and even people like John McCain, version 2000, uh, would have been- very. To version Very. 2000. Oh yeah, I like McCain. Even though I'm like I, I disagreed with him on some things, but I saw him as someone who's capable, like and competent to do that. Big, big things. 
But like looking, uh, looking at the candidates available now, it's like who can work with all these moving parts? That's a huge thing for presidenting. It's what else? Uh, what, was there anything else that happened other than the well, predictable? Well, no, and that's and that's the thing. It's it's very the, to your to your question. Um, Sarah Palin is not uh, well read. She's not. Uh, she does not read a lot of newspapers. To, to quote she Eddie Izzard, she's not she's she, not well read. She's thinly read. <laughs> right, and and she and she doesn't know, she cannot name what the Bush doctrine is. But I have to tell you, she's a cunning personality. She knows and she knows her audience. To to your to your wondering to your question of does she know? I my personal take watching her both in real life and from the safety of my computer monitor. Is that she you can't is get any of the crazy on you? Absolutely, one hundred percent aware, and it's, not only that, um, she's in on the joke. She's she's very much in on the joke. She she was after two thousand eight. Um, by all by all means, if it had been anyone less of a spectacle, they would have gone back. They would have you know made yeah. some Fox News cons consulting money, maybe written a book. Um, but Roger Ailes brought her in and welcomed her in. She, and look, she, she drops her G's. She does run on sentences. She's highly flawed. Sentences. And that's not a, in her book and in, in the book of the, the, in the books of the people to whom she is speaking. Yeah. That is, that is a feature and not a bug. Yeah. And it's... when she gets responses, mm -hmm. it's not... Interestingly enough, it is not the positive responses that move her. She is animated both in real life, and, and this was interesting to see first up. Oh, yeah. The booze, it's like she, she feeds off, she grows in power. Your rage fuels me. And you mm. get that a little from how thin-skinned she is in interviews on Fox News, but oh, yeah. in real life, when it's happening in real time, and she's like, you know, given that like smirk ah. and that little, little shoulder thing, it's like, wow, you... You really you, feed off of this. It's, uh, she she really hasn't gotten any more thick skinned over the years. No, she, it's gotten worse. If anything, it's like oh, as soon as you say something I disagree with, I'm going to be more horrible to you. Right, and that's her her defense mechanism isn't learning things. It's throwing vitriol at someone. It gets back to what you were saying. She knows her base. She knows oh, yeah. her market. She knows she can tap dance around the truth of what she's doing. She can say, oh, I'm advancing in another direction. And they're going to go, we love you, Sarah. And like, that's, you know what? I, I, a part of me, even though I, I, it's a part of like to, to steal this from John Oliver, it's a part of me that I hate. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of entertained by it. Like I kind of go, ah, oh, fuck it. She, she knows exactly what she's doing. Yep. And she's horrible, and she's good at being horrible and good, bad at and good at what she's doing. I, I almost, like I said, I, I'm, I'm almost in awe of someone who can be this horrible. But you, gotta, you know, you gotta follow your bliss. It's follow your bliss, Sarah. Keep being that much of a. F so we were all kind of salivating about this because one of the things that we love about politics is not just watching one person get up and rant because we already know the one one opinion. Watching two people who disagree going head to head, oh, just. It, it's a big old political boner. Like I'm, I'm, I'm what just thinking about it. This was the thriller in <gasps> Vanilla, so and tiny. he's married to Barry oh. Madeline. You who, know, on that. the exact opposite sides oh. of working on campaigns. You, you know, you know that there have been some nights where someone's been sleeping on a couch, or when there's been some hot or, makeup sex. That's a spicy Louisiana marriage. Oh. I can't, I can't do it's, him right now. But I, I had a James Carville impression that was. It used to be so much fun. Oh my god! And it's like I, it's occasionally, occasionally things come out of him that are just the, so good old Southern boy, and he makes up these these expressions. What we, what we gonna you, do here? Huh? You, you do lovingly on metaphor and simile. You can't, you can't get a, you can't get a rattlesnake into a hole without a honey badger making it angry about the. <laughs> it's like, and I'm like, holy shit, James Carville, what are you? I, it's, oh, I'm like, god. I don't know what you said, but I loved it. And it's He's like, fantastic. Oh. Now, the first thing he did, which was fun to watch, is, is just a little aside, was he came out, took off his coat, and started rolling up his the, sleeves. And everybody oh, was like, oh, oh shit, oh, it's, it's going to go down. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. it's, it's 
Oh, no, it's any, and here's one, one of the other little things we noticed later on, we took pictures, when he when he sat down, his his pant leg went up a little bit, and he had really cute <laughs> socks. Saucy. We, 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 were, we were digging the James Carville festive socks. Moving and on. And he was saying, he stated flat out, you know, I, I'm not, and it, it kind of set the tone for, for the convention. I'm not going to change Sarah Palin's mind. She's yes. not going to change my mind. But we're going to have a dialogue, and we're going to at least understand each other's minds a little bit better. <laughs> Which, I, 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 I don't, I, I'm not on enough drugs to understand Sarah Palin's mind, but it was nice of him to try. I think we um, got a little, a little yeah. place into that with, we, uh, without yeah. just a few minutes ago. We, we got, we, 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 we grasp her without, <laughs> without fully, like, I can never understand, we can never understand her, Sarah. And then she gets to start talking about Donald Trump. Now, for the first part of this, you can't tell in the audience how, like she just said, uh, how homogenous it is, how many, um, you know, if you're sitting in a part of the audience where you're about to get shanked because you show that you're uh, anti-Sarah, or if you're sitting around Trumpy people, or or you know, like, and I, I looked around and there's someone behind me with a Hillary shirt, and there are there look to be enough people around that are that are that are pro-democratic and right. that are you know that are that probably won't kill me. And some I start to hear some giggles, and because you know she said some funny shit, and then you know Starts by you know giggles. unintentionally funny shit. You know, she, she didn't know it was funny, but we did. Like, then someone asked a question about Trump or, you know, and she goes, Donald Trump has been in the public eye for, sorry, I have to get my Sarah voice on. Oh, Donald Trump has been in the public eye for 30 years and nobody has ever accused him of saying a racist thing now. So I think it's the lamestream media or something like that. And at this point, uh, my boyfriend, Anna and I, I, I think it started with me laughing so hard that I just, I couldn't fucking contain it. Cause we've been doing that like laugh, like, you know, we try <laughs> Like, you know, shoulders shaking, but we're not laughing out loud. Like, <laughs> I still have tooth marks on the insides of my cheeks. Like, we started laughing out loud so hard that I was sure they were going to kick me out. And I kept laughing for like a minute because I just couldn't fucking stop. Like, it yeah. was it was built up from like, you know, the first 20 minutes of it. It had to be like 20 minutes into it at least. Yeah. There were the, the gut laughs and boos from from the rubber. Yeah, it's like there was and, and there was a ton of booing when she said that. And I just I just laughed because I was like, oh shit, it is on now. Like cause <laughs> she just it's as soon as you pull the Trump isn't Trump is Trump is ne he has never said anything racist. I'm like it was just, oh, it was one of the, like, it, it was the type of laughter that I needed a fucking cigarette afterwards. It was great. It was, but, it was magical. Oh, but like. And we were all there. It's a part of, we're a part of it and we're all, a, and it's a part of us. But like, afterwards, it was just the crazy kept going. Now, she referenced, at one point, I know she was talking about, oh, the lamestream media. She got into, she goes, and she goes, and Katie Couric. I'm like, bitch, you are still mad about Katie Couric. Here comes you're, the thin skin. You're mad about a thing, <laughs> about a reporter asking you what you read. Now, I mean, if somebody, because again, like I, I get it, I'm not a politician uh, on the national stage, but you know, people read my stupid little uh, blog. Uh, but like, if somebody asks me where I get my information from, I can give you a list of places because I have to go online and read places to get information about the world. I can give you a list of five to ten websites and newspapers that I read on a daily or weekly basis. And this you is would... casual conversation. This isn't okay. You're going to have an interview with a journalist, and people are prepping what you beforehand. Should you say, what should yeah. you have at your disposal? Yeah. yeah, somebody should have been prepping her beforehand, saying, "Here's, you know, telling her about this stuff." And you know, she, there's, there's a thing when you work as a politician or you work in the public eye where someone should say, all right, if you're not sure what to say beforehand, you know, nobody's gonna notice if you take a deep breath and say, I'm glad you asked that question. That is, no matter what, if you're, here's a, here's a quick hint for you out yep. there who are watching. If you're at a job interview and you're, if somebody asks you a question and for a split second you go into panic mode and you go, oh shit, say, very calmly say, well, I'm really glad you asked that question. It's an important point to bring up. It buys you a few seconds and makes you look like you're polished. Sarah Palin was trying to run for leader of the fucking free world. Okay, vice leader of the fucking free world. <laughs> and nobody told her, or she didn't bother to remember, that's a really good question. I'm glad you brought that up. Well, she thought of, I don't know, Washington Post, New York Times, Boston Globe, Boston Herald, LA Times, anything other than oh, all of them. And these weren't all of them. These weren't and uh, here's gotcha questions they yeah. were they weren't like okay uh in in 
1999, what was your favorite Helen Thomas article from the yeah. New York Times? It, you know, it, it was it was simply, what do you read? Because we don't know you. Yeah. You're kind of plucked from obscurity. We just want to We would know. like to get to know you. And just... At say, the very least. Say the name of a newspaper. Just tell yeah. us the New York Times. Tell us you'd like the fucking crossword, even though we know you don't know any words other than freedom. Um, like, just just lie to us. We don't even care. Just make up a thing. And years later, the fact that she still goes, Katie Couric was mean to me in the lamestream media, that, that tells you something about this human being's character, that she can't just go, you know what, whatever. Like, take a fucking yoga class, Sarah. Learn to say namaste, we're getting over it. And we've moved on to the next thing because she's she's like like stayed in she stayed locked in time in the right. 2008 election everything right. for her was this one thing and the thing is news cycles run on 15 minute increments now you're it's yep. like it's like looking back at the permian epoch and and fossils and it's she's she's a 2008 fossil but here's the thing i i like to say that like We've seen, like, because of Sarah Palin, I, I think Sarah Palin is why we have Trump now, because they saw how much people loved the crazy, and right. Trump on some level had to have known that this crazy was going to resonate because he, we saw it happening before. There wouldn't have been, uh, like, I don't think people would have accepted or would have gone along with a Trump candidacy if there hadn't been a Sarah Palin type figure out there first. I don't think the I media would have. Definitely. I don't think the media would have accepted it. I don't think, I think, you know, some voters, there would have been a crazy contingent out there, but I don't think they would have been primed. It's, I was about to make a really horrible joke and I'm holding back on it. Like, I, I don't think they were primed. No, I am going to make it. I think they were only primed enough for this type of political molestation uh, because <laughs> Sarah Palin uh, porns them up a little bit with some disturbing, disturbing stuff. We're going to be asking the Ameri American electorate later to show us on the doll where We're Sarah Palin touched it. And if, but, and if you have any complaints about that joke I made, leave them in the comments where I will promptly <laughs> ignore them and tell you I don't care. I have a special folder all set for that. It's, I'm, but I, I, I'll be crying so much about the things you say that are mean about me. I know I'm a fat whore already. It's okay. I'm. You can just keep making the comments. It's okay. I think, Moving on. I think... Uh, I think she definitely, and this is just my take, she definitely enabled um, more of that to be okay. Yeah. And that's why she was hired on. I think you can find uh, precedent for her in uh, George Bush yeah. and the anti-intellectualism, which there oh, has yeah. been a strain of in, in America for quite some time. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, and he, it started back in, like, the 80s with Ronald with Reagan. With Ronald Reagan. And it's, here's the sad thing. If you look at the politics of Reagan versus the politics of, you know, the current Republican Party, man, Reagan looks so good. Amnesty, yeah. responsible gun control. Yep. Like, and they all call talk about him like he's St. Reagan. Man, if they could take some advice from St. St. Reagan just I'm like I just want to I want to sit it's down hard for them to look at his record it's hard for anyone to it, it's it's hard to look at the complete record for anybody it's, because uh, you know everybody has like okay yeah. well you know Nixon is obviously the go-to bad guy at the same time Nixon formed the EPA Oh, man. and you know the EPA is just out to kill business, obviously. I, I don't think all Republicans are blowhard. I think most of them aren't. Uh, but a couple of the ones who are like, we hashtag have to Hashtag not all Republicans. Hashtag not all Republicans. Like, it's one of my, one of my friends who ever, every time I go to D.C., like, one of my BFFs is, like, not just a Republican, but, like, works in, like, with congressmen. Like, I, it's... So, I mean, I'm not saying the saying, like, I'm not one of the people who's like, if you're a Republican, I don't like you. But they're, they've said some shit. <laughs> let's, let's be blunt. Uh, but they're, uh, it's, like, last week, and I, like I said, I, I sit down with farmers and talk to them for a living. A bunch of uh, Southern Dara farmers who are all gun owners. Um, they're like, they're like, yeah, who, who, and they were in Florida. Uh, they were, they were all like, yeah, I don't need an AR-15. They're like, I have a gun, but we don't need, a, um, and I know there are, there are a lot of people who are, you know, very, uh, emotionally driven about the term assault rifles they're like what the fuck do you need an ar-15 for um so i mean i'm not i'm not saying ban all guns i'm saying we do need a little bit more responsible gun control and george hw bush agrees with that like it's you know the the fact that he was so far off of where the current republican poli uh, party is and where all the talking points are come on guys can't can't you this is we'll get into this a little bit more after <laughs> right, when we talk about our good friend Michael well, Steele. Steele but it was it was crazy being in the room watching James Carville uh, and you know trying to ask questions and trying to get you know any amount of straight answers out because it was just it was nutty at one point oh this is great the Q&A came up
Oh. Uh, and our the, the kid was the fucking hero of the day. So we we have to give props to this 10-year-old kid who oh. was a member of the press, and I did oh. not prep his name. Um, but he, we, we'll roll the clip in this. Um, oh he asked her, how, how can you, you know, support Donald Trump as a woman when he said about Megyn Kelly, a 10 year old reference. Yeah. Uh, this, this I want to subscribe to this kid's newsletter. I don't care. I, yeah. you know, I, I will support his it's whatever. 10 year old. Um, yeah. Like you. And, uh, you know, how can you, um, support him as a woman when he said Megyn Kelly about... has blood coming out of her wherever. And her her default was he's not a sexist, I wouldn't be voting for him if he was. That's that that's okay. a, that's a complete lack of an answer. That's not how answers work. That's just saying, well, it's it's like it's kind of like saying after someone says, you know, they're rapists, they're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime. Well, I don't think that's not it's well, what if we said, said that about all Alaskans? <laughs> like, yeah. we have to build a wall between here and Alaska. Like, that's that, that's direct. Like, that's the exact definition of someone saying a shitty thing about a, a, a widespread group of you know people. But it like, kind of blood is blood coming out of her wherever. Really. And and that was that was the interesting thing because James Carville did his level best. Um, he, you know, he said, you know, I not I'd, reach across the table and murder her. I, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to change your mind. I want to understand your mind. I want to understand the mind of Sarah Palin. And it was, it was the same. She, she would excerpt bits of what she always says yeah. and use them as answers. And, you know, there would be a lot of like, okay, but what I'm trying to ask, you know, and he would say it in a very polite way. Okay. So, so back to the question that I asked and Again, she knows what, it, it honestly, was, she, I think she knows what she's doing. She goes in a circle to try to give whatever talking point she already knows. So right. you'll never be able to corner her into a piece of new information. And that's like... That's the thing. And I think, I think the only way to actually get to have a genuine conversation where you get past that defensiveness, which yeah. partially is earned, is probably to turn the cameras off and just oh, yeah. be speaking with her alone. With, with, with a hidden recorder. With, <laughs> with but, a hidden recorder. Can you please speak a little louder into my lapel? It's how I hear things. My my my, my ear is in my left tit, Sarah. Speak, speak very slowly and softly. Try not to it. pop your consonants. <laughs> so... I'll pop something else. Anyways. Uh, I just, I just, I, yeah. I want to curl up in her brain and see what's actually happening in there. If it's just a bunch of squirrels running around or if this is such <laughs> an orchestrated act. But here's, like, we saw a little bit of more up close in her brain. That was just such a, a, a bullshit political answer what she told the 10-year-old. I wouldn't, like, it's like, no. So you don't find what he said to Megyn Kelly. You don't find all the shit he said about women historically. You don't find the creepy shit he said about his one-year-old daughter saying, well, <laughs> she. we don't know <laughs> if she has her mother's tits yet. <laughs> you don't find that. Get out of my head. <laughs> you don't find that creepy <laughs> at all. Like, like, just, I'm just curious. Like, Sarah, you have, like, you have, you have a bunch of daughters. Like, wouldn't you find it creepy if someone was talking about their, you know, their, their, parts like in a it, like the the organs that are one day going to turn into adult sexual organs wouldn't you find it creepy if an adult man was saying you know she has her mother's legs and i don't know if she has her mother's tits yet wouldn't you find it creepy if someone was talking like that about one of your kids i'm just saying if i ever found out that a male relative said that about me my father or anyone else i'd be like where do i sign up for a restraining order yeah that's fucked up like he doesn't look at women as equals or peers or capable human beings he sees them as arm candy and even if even if you disagreed with that um the question the question was put out yeah you know at least at least for a 10 year old maybe Does. you could lose the i you know i would have hoped i i kind of would have hoped that yeah. just for a 10 year old she would have been able to like maybe uh. let the guard down a little bit and instead but instead she was still that vindictive nope. defensive thing with the you know with the tight lips and it's like don't you know he's 10 years old at least maybe, maybe humor him a little 
you know, he's out there in the press and, you know. I was, I was impressed with that kid. That was a hard question to get up in That, that. was an awesome getting, kid. Getting to go up there and ask that when you're 10, oh, man. Like, <laughs> I, I'm waiting to see where that kid is in a decade. I can't oh wait. Oh, my God. Like, it's... five years from now, he's going to be somewhere. So basically, like, regardless of where you are on the political spectrum, that was the event to be at. Yeah. I mean, as, as, soon, oh as, as soon as I got inside from... Big old political From, a, from another great. area in there, I saw this huge line, and I'm like, this has got to be... This is it. And <laughs> everybody was coming up to us in the line going, is this the James Carville, Sarah Palin line? Like, yeah, it is. Wait, Go we, to the back. We, we should have just so. said, no, it's the Lady Parts Justice League. <laughs> I'm kidding, but you should. I, I say that because not oh. enough not enough people attended their event, and it was great, and it was hilarious. So I'm like, if I told, it's like, it's that was that was horrible. I love them, and I want more people to go their stuff. Like, we're gonna talk about them a lot more. Because. James Carville and Sarah Palin were 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 awesome, and it was oh, yeah. no matter where you go on the political it's, spectrum, it was the if, event to be at. If you have a if you're interested in politics and love it, and just like to see an interesting discourse, and you have a chance to see something like that, go. Just because Absolutely. it's it's always interesting to see people from across the political political aisle just have a go at each other, have a conversation, and see how the audience reacts. Like, because you're gonna you're gonna learn a little bit about how uh, how a human being and how a politico uh, works by seeing how they interact with an audience, not just this, not just in a studio, because they yeah. have to function. Like, I mean, I've been a I do public speaking. Functioning when you have a live audience in front of you, especially ones that you know can ask you questions, oh man, that's a, it's an interesting spot to be in because you know you have to not be too adversarial with your audience because they can spit fire a few questions back at you. Sarah Palin does she she's a honey badger. She gives no shits. She's like, I'm gonna keep being adversarial. And I'm gonna say whatever the fuck I want. And that way, I kind of I almost admire that, except that she's a horrible human being. I kind of I I, I get. I kind of see it as she she doesn't have she doesn't really have anything else yeah to do she if she nothing, she also has nothing to is, lose right and the and the thing is here's here's what I kind of liken it to in 2012 right the Obama coalition showed that the the sorry white men um, <laughs> the <laughs> Sorry. This is this is gonna this is gonna sting a little. Just it's okay. Um, You'll be okay. And I apologize. You'll get through it. For that, we're all gonna get through this together. Um, it showed that uh, I mean Romney won with I I forget if it was fifty nine percent or sixty two percent of the white male vote, and he you lost still strong. the presidency, and that that even if Trump gets garners the same percentage of the white vote, which <gasps> he's by the snapshots in time that polls are probably not going to do, but even if he does, um, there Guess are not what? enough of those voters to let him win. It's, unless, and again, polls are snapshots in time. But, uh, but but let's think about this. How many people are so disgusted by all the shit he says that they're not going to vote for him, especially given that 70% of women right. and something like 85 to 95% of black people are like, mm-mm, He's, he's gonna... pulling at 1% with black people. 1%? By, by some, by some. I want to meet the 1%. Yeah. So, so... Um, the rest of the 99 percenters, you can hang with us. Like, I'm just saying. Absolutely. We love the 99%. I get that she is playing to her base, but the thing is, her, her, her base is diminishing in size and relevance and importance. And that's okay because, I mean, overall, and this is just my take on it, yeah. um, and this is just my opinion, the opinions expressed here are those of me and, and no one else, um, I am all for that. Um, I, I think a more inclusive, diverse, America fulfills yeah. uh, what this nation's soul is supposed it's, to be about. And, it, and, it's, and it, it's very interesting to me that like we're we are not all that far removed like from from this you know from from the signs in windows saying Irish need not apply. From the Jim Crow era. Uh, it's and, and I mean people seem to think this was a long time ago. Like it's I mean I, I grew up in Boston, which I, I hate to say it, horribly racist city. Like not not as bad anymore. Uh, but like there was an era really not that long ago in history where people remember how racist Boston was, gotten a lot better and it's because it's gotten a lot more diverse and people have gone, hey look, 
people who look a little different than me are still human and have the same wants and needs and are, are pretty much the same as me. But as long as we keep having people that are in the public eye and we accept that they say horrible things about people that are a little different than them because they have a different skin color or a different accent or they come from a different country and this still is continued to be accepted, it's, we're gonna be, we're gonna, like, we're just accepting people being shitheads to other people. And this is not gonna help us grow and be more diverse. Like we, we started accepting like every so often a new wave of immigrants come in, comes into the country and it changed, like, you know, for a little while we're a little uncomfortable because we're like, I, I, don't, I don't get what's going on. Something's different in here. I'm not, what, what's, I don't know how this is happening. And then, you know, the, the cultural landscape of the country changes a little bit and things get, things get groovy again. Like there's, you know, the place changes and it's not, I, I, I don't know if I want to say it's for better or worse, but you know what? Like the, the fabric, it gets, the fabric gets a little bit updated that's and it's something. nice. Like that's, keeps the country kind of, it's, it's like a thing of Febreze only for the culture of the country. <laughs> <laughs> With regards to, um, Sarah Palin playing to the base. Yeah. And this base being, you know, kind of a diminished, one of diminishing returns. Yeah. Um, I do believe that if she wanted, if, if her goal was to uh, y really get into the nitty gritty and, and, and be, a, be a working pole, yeah. um, she would have... She would have gone along with the, you know, 2012 autopsy that yeah. Rince Priebus did that was promptly uh, thrown out. Yep. Unfortunately, you know, her, her response to James Carville, you know, his question about, well, what, how do you, you, you know, you guys are losing elections uh, and, and how do you bring more people in was to simply say, well, yeah, we got to go into those communities and, and tell them. Uh, sure, essentially, you know, legal immigration is fine, but illegal immigration is not, and you should be bothered by it. It's yeah, this it's, idea that you're not speaking with and finding out what the problems yeah, are that these communities yeah. actually have. They're it's, not listening to them at all. Right. It's and, and they're not, here's the thing, they're not listening to, like I said, they're not listening to the autopsy of it, so they're not looking at a fact-based reality, um, and they're, it's like, this is something we're gonna get into this in a minute with with Michael Steele, but like there's there's a thing where in order to actually get out and and, um, and help out your constituents, you have to talk to them and see what their concerns are, um, and by just going in and saying here's what our stance is and you have to take it, that's not gonna like it's. You, you you can't shove anything down someone's throat. They're gonna gag it back up. That's just <laughs> it's, I'm just saying. You have to ease past the gag reef. Yeah, you have Wait, to. Sorry. Yeah, you, <laughs> you have to get consent before you before you work on deep throating. I'm just saying it's it can be lovely, but it's not for politics. It's um, it's not, and but, not suddenly. But I mean, here's the thing: like the, the the way you build a consensus is by you know finding out how uh, you know wh where you two have things in common. Just by saying legal immigration is good, illegal immigration is bad. That that's such a it's not just a black and white point of view. It ignores all the problems within the immigration system and the fact that there are people yes. already living here who came because they wanted they wanted the American dream. Having seen her as having watched her speech as a rubbernecker, having right. been there as a sort of joint rubbernecker sort of true believer with the James Carville and her, um, I actually had an experience previous to that as a essentially a true believer at a panel hosted by Mark Thompson and Ture, who I have to give all props to. Um, it was it was a fast paced, just it was the panel was uh, Clinton and African Americans, it's complicated. And wow. it went into huh. race in America, history in America, and they are they're, they're, first of all, their, their mannerisms and styles are awesome. Like one's an author and a podcaster. One's an author and a podcaster. Um, Mark Thompson is, is kind of, you know, been on the front lines and kind of a grizzled, you know, warrior oh, yeah. type, war, very professorial. And Ture is just like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> and they were fantastic. And I was looking around the room like, okay, well, who's the rubbernecker? Who's the true believer? And I couldn't really tell there were two guys in front of me in very tight fitting plaid uh, pastel shirts mm -hmm. who had shaved heads and there was a tattoo mm -hmm. and I was kind of like mm -hmm. but at the same time they were sitting, sitting there perfectly 
perfectly, and I'm not saying they were skinheads, but <laughs> um, <laughs> howebs. If the it, evidence would if it, show if it walks like a skinhead, and they weren't clapping. So you know, no. but but they were sitting there listening, and and so so there was this there was this interesting situation where I'm like, okay, this is where I'm a true believer. I am totally on board with what they're saying about about progressivism, how it, how the parties have interacted with the black vote, how they've interacted with voters of color over the years. And this is how, this is how people hear Sarah Palin who support her. Yeah, and that's an interesting thought. Except for the fact, two facts. First of all, they were, they were bringing in data. They were addressing they were bringing in numbers and and like okay well then that parallels with this and this and this and that and the other thing and also they're while being very respectful in the spirit of the event to anyone who might disagree with their points of view they they were very plain with you know okay look these are the demographics this is how it's changing this is where history's headed yeah so it's, it, it really, it was a very interesting comparison between Sarah Palin's like, you know, well, we're, you, you know, with, with James Carville's question of how do you stay relevant as the Republican Party when you're losing elections because you don't have enough of, a, of you know, the, this vote to, yeah. with, with her like, well, you just dig in more. I go in and tell them my opinion and they'll agree with me because Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and, and with this, and comparing that with this like forward thinking, like, well, this is where we're headed. Yeah. Um, and it was it was amazing. There was one there was one um, other instance that was really that was kind of fun, and I'm kind of embarrassed to to talk about because I'm a little like I don't want to be like the white splainer. Um, there was one question that somebody asked afterward, which was because uh, they were discussing Flint, Michigan, mm. and the water crisis, and you know oh what happened God. with that. And uh, one of the question, one of the questions was, do you know what the different um, reactions were between the two Democratic candidates to the to the crisis? And I was like, inside, I'm like Hermione Granger going, oh, I know this one, I know this one, I know this one. <laughs> but you know, on the outside, I'm like, let's let's see what happens here. And I I assumed, you know, Toure would know, and he's like, well, I I don't actually know that, so I'm like. Do I, no, I don't. I, I wait and I go up afterward, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna let him know privately that there are that that has been d recorded, and so I did, and I'm like, um, just so you know, that one question, there were two different responses by the two Democratic candidates, uh, and it was in keeping with what you were talking earlier, uh, saying earlier about like pro pragmatic progressivism, which is you know you know you, it's, I, you I, I actually you don't know this. What were the two responses? Because I'm curious. This is interesting. Because it's I I've kept up with it to a point. More only more on the scientific aspects of how this gets uh, resolved and how it happened uh, than anything else. And that's another podcast for another day. To anyone who might be working on this, there is no reason why you shouldn't be putting all the fucking money you can into this. And if you need uh, however much money you need to put into it, however you can get it, get the money and fix it because this is your children and your grandchildren and you who are drinking this fucking water and you're poisoning people. I, I My background's in toxicology. I'm not fucking around on this. Fix this shit. Carry on. My background is in drawing cartoons and and she's damn good at it. Do there you like you go. your Do you like your Simpsons? I did. You should. I did. Oh, dude. I I do, did the. Do you like your Simpsons? You should not be as poisoning someone, people. As someone whose background includes the scene in the movie where Lisa decides to put contaminated water from Lake Springfield <gasps> into everybody's drinking water, and they do the largest spit take the, in history, and Mo says, "See, this is why we should hate kids." Um, as someone. You yeah. listen. It's uh, Toxicology and Simpsons Animator. You yeah. just fucking clean up. So, so there's there's our, the more <laughs> you know. It's that, we'll edit that in and post. Anyways. So th between the two Democratic presidential candidates, um, Sanders came up and, you know, was very adamant that Governor Snyder should resign. He, he, he got up there and he was like, he should resign. He should resign his post. This is unconscionable. And yeah. 
Snyder probably should resign, yeah. uh, morally speaking, and it is unconscionable. But um, and this is all this is all uh, documented interviews from uh, the Flint mayor Karen Weaver. Yeah. Um, Clinton's response was two pronged. She was the only one to call the mayor up and offer help. Wow. She said, "What do you need?" Um, she dispatched two campaign aides to go down there and help the mayor assess the problems and get wow. help to people, including like some, I, I don't know how much, but some bulk amount of drinking water to tide them over Holy shit. in the meantime. It's, I'm guessing, here's the thing, Hillary Clinton has a decent buttload of money kicking around. I'm sure that she, out of the, like, you can demonize rich people all you want. Uh, like, it's funny, America's a and country of, America's a country of demonizing rich people while trying to become the rich people. We're a very strange country when it comes to that. If but you somebody, know what? Somebody said that we're a nation of temporary, with the poor do not see ourselves as poor, oh, but temporarily, temporarily, disenfranchised, temporarily disenfranchised millionaires. Temporarily millionaires. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And it's yeah. like, it's, we're, we're very strange about it. You know what? Most of us are going to be middle class all of our lives. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being rich either. But you know what? If you're rich, be, be you know, it's it, it's hopeful that you'll be, you know, somewhat moral and responsible with right. how you how you act. The Clintons pay about 30% per year with their tax dollars. Donald Trump, last time he uh, released his tax returns, zero. Nothing. That was her response to the right. Flint water crisis. I kind of look at that as this is a person who is putting her time, like she's a busy woman. Like I, whatever you have to say about your right. complaints about her, a lot of them are probably based on Republican talking points that aren't true, but moving but on. Said, uh, da, da, da. Um, but this is a busy fucking woman. Whatever you say about her, she is busy. And she took the time to, you know, to figure out within her campaign to send time and money and people who worked in her campaign to go actually help instead of just making a speech about it. You gotta respect that, come on. And at that point, there... she called Snyder out for not helping. After and she'd helped. After, it was either after or concurrent to. Yeah. And he ended up sending help, sending aid. And his, his, his aides were very much like, well, we, we did it because, you know. But it wasn't until after she called him out, which was, so, so it was a very interesting case study. And it was why the Flint Mayor, Mayor Weaver said, this is why I'm endorsing Clinton. She's the only wow. person who reached out to us who was running for wow. president. And I got to go with that. It's, you know, if anyone, because I'm sure there are people watching who are like, who are still burning your busters. I, I admire your passion, though I just disagree. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful observation on your part uh, that you could be watching as a true believer uh, at this one thing. And there are people watching as rubberneckers and you could be at this other event watching as a rubbernecker of Sarah Palin. And there are people watching as true believers. And sometime uh, working, like sometime while I was cybabing, uh, I realized that there were people like on my page and on uh, you know Food Babe's page that were like that were watching it from like they know they have the right answer and I don't have it or they you know they know I have the right answer and it's not the right and it's like they're it's it's like it's 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 like a political battlefield only in a different little right. arena arena and it made me realize they're just different talking heads on different parts of the internet. Like it's in different little right. universes, and it's like I at some point I have that that self awareness dawning in a different little universe. I'm like, oh, these are all it's rubberneckers and true believers. Isn't and it crazy? It's like, and it's funny watching these internet wars take off. And all all you can do about it is shout the truth as loud as you can in whatever way you think your message is going to get across, and hope that you reach the that you reach people and that you're helping people and. As much as I disagree with some with the, these people, vehemently disagree with people that I fight against, I you know they have the right to say it. Yeah, it's a it's I, I I can correct them all I want, but I I know that their audience looks at them as though they have the truth. Yep. They're they're the true believers, and my people are kind of stalking them, going er? like, and that's <laughs> it's an interesting thing watching how this stuff plays out. Um, in, in like in, in arenas like this, but man, is. That, that that is such an such an astute observation on your part from going to that uh, event and going, oh, this is how people see Sarah Palin. I don't, like, I don't know because I because it seemed like everybody else was getting that too, like and and when I went up to to Ray afterward, because okay, I, well I didn't go up to him. Um, I I just I was just like I'm just gonna let them know that it's out there. They can look it up for themselves. I'm I'm not gonna take their time. You know, I'm mm -hmm. not gonna bug them. Um, but 
I was going out to the car to get my charger and I hear him call my name and I turn around and he's like, hey, so what about that? What about that Flint thing? And I'm like, oh, well, oh. Um, he, and he's like, come here, come here, come on. And nice. so I followed him to this doorway that said talent only. And I stopped at the doorway <laughs> and he's like, no, come on in. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'm coming in now. And the guy with the clipboard was like, oh yeah, sandwiches are over there. Drinks are over there. And I'm like, I got a sandwich. Because I was I, really like, hungry I'm, at that you're point. You're like, I'm talent. <laughs> I'm, I'm t- I can be I get a pastrami and jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, so tell me about the Flint res- response. Nice. And I'm like, okay. So I told I, him I what I told you and, and he's like, uh-huh, exactly. Okay. Yep. Exactly. And he, and we just started and he's like, it's, it's the pragmatic progressive, you know, it's, it's, it's fighting hard and, you know, scrabbling yeah. for what change you can and being, knowing that it's going to come in, in hard work and, and bits and pieces. And I said, I, it's, that's exactly it. And, and, you know, fight for definitely what you can, mm. um, but don't take for granted the victories. And that was the thing yeah. that, he, that he and Mark Thompson were coming back to is don't take, for, don't take the victories for granted. Yeah. And um, I, I said as well, there was, there was another thing about the response, which was that during the debates in Flint, Michigan, I don't know if you remember this, yeah. but she was the first one to call out and look, she, she said, and look, let's not kid ourselves. If this happened in a rich suburb, this would not even be. This happened in a poor black neighborhood. So oh, this damn. and that and the other. She, she's the first person to Throwing name some, uh... white privilege in any oh, of yeah. these by name. And it's like, and here's the, and Bernie, holy shit. And let's, let's be blunt. People don't, want, people don't want to mention it. Bernie Sanders is continually elected in, in a predominantly rich, upper upper class white state. 98% white. 98% white. Yeah. It's, oh, it's gotten a little bit more non-white. <laughs> Used to be 99, I think. It was, it's, it's pretty, Vermont is pretty damn white. Not, it, I'm, just, I'm just saying, y'all, y'all are nice. Y'all are pretty fucking white. Some of our um, best friends are white. It's, it's, we're, um, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm really. Oh my God. It's, we're clearly not complaining. <laughs> we're just saying those are the yeah. demographics of the state that elects Bernie. Um, and you know, what? it's, it's a really and monetarily okay. endowed state. Um, they're not the type of state that would, like, there are, there are a lot of tax dollars floating around there. It's, it's a really okay, like the state is doing well. They wouldn't have the type of of problems that Flint, Michigan, that's falling apart, would have, and like they need to figure out a better way to distribute the money so that this so that the city doesn't go bankrupt and let its citizens drink poison uh, poisonous water. So Bernie screaming, um, you know, fire the mayor is not a thing that's going to fix anything. Um, right. Like that's, and that's my, it would feel good. Oh yeah. It'd be great to just fire a guy, but you know what, what does firing a guy accomplish? It doesn't get the lead out of the drinking water. It doesn't change the years of damage, uh, to these people's DNA and to their, uh, to their body and their children's bodies, uh, that's already been incurred. It's, and that's, that's horrifying to me. You know what? Like somebody saying, what can we do to help the situation and sending money and aid and people and time is, is, you know, part of the reason why I respect the Clinton camp, because this is kind of how she approaches a lot of things. It's like, what pronged approach do we need to take to it? And yeah, right. things don't get better right away. It would look great. And so it's a great sound, but to say we fired the guy didn't, wouldn't yeah. fix it. Wouldn't fucking fix it. Getting it, but it's, oh man. Like that's, that's one of the little things about it. For the record, uh, quick disclaimer. Um, I, while Bernie Sanders constituency in Vermont is 98% white, I am not making the claim that his supporters nationally in his campaign are that, um, I know, I know a great diverse, wonderful group of people who are supporters of him. And I, I have to make that disclaimer, uh, not hashtag, not all Bernie supporters. (laughs) Um, so I, so there you go. I'm and and if he'd won, I totally would have been voting for him. Totally. It's holy shit. Oh yes. yeah, I would have been. I would have done everything in my power you know, to make sure he got elected, which pretty much just means I would have shown up and voted for him. But uh, this because is because Donald Trump. But but is I mean, running on the Republican side. Mm-hmm, but you know, we're asking you since, of course, you know, Hillary's you know kind of been our girl since day one. Uh, that you know, if since we would have gone over. Uh, since, you know, if you actually look at the facts of this election and not just the, what I want to think is true, uh, uh, Hillary's got some good solutions. Come on over. Come on. You'll be fine. Don't worry. It's, it, it might hurt a little bit at first, but you know, lube up, you'll be okay. Uh, so 
exiting Exit. the James Carville, Sarah Palin, mm. uh, Thrilla in Vanilla. So earlier, in what the, happened? Or earlier in the day, Anna had run into Michael Steele and they'd had a quick chit chat, and he actually remembered her name. <gasps> Because why wouldn't you remember Anna? Because she's wonderful. It's an um, easy name to remember, it's, and it's a palindrome. And and, she's, and he's a politician, so he's really good at that kind oh of yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Well, and Anna's adorable. Why wouldn't you remember her? Anyway, so we get out of there, and, like, I'm rarely, like, flummoxed by people, but I know that when people are at these events, like, because I, you know, I, I tend to be, by the end of them, I am tired. I don't, like, I, I don't have any energy left in me by the end of them a lot of times, and I was like... My God, it's Michael Steele. He's yeah. It's like I'm like I really I want to you know go like I, I didn't know what he was gonna be like if he was gonna have time to talk like he'd already been chit chatted at all you know all weekend. Um, and I was like, come on, let's go. Let's go. I knew she, I knew what he was like. I knew this was gonna be fun. It's like and I was like, are, are you sure it'll be okay? She's like, come on, come on. Come on. He was <laughs> he was talking to a group of people including John Fugel saying Rick Unger who's his co-host on Steel and Unger or is it Unger and Steel? Uh, Steel and Unger, I think. And Either way, they do a radio show and it's you should listen to it. And Anyways, he's the former form, former head of of Marvel, so we, we had some, some interesting discussions. Yeah. And either way, so it's eventually Anna's like, come on, come on, come on, let's go. And he, I mean, he, he's like, Anna! And it's, he came over and chit-chatted. I'm like, what? We're just sitting here <laughs> talking to Michael Steele? That's wonderful! Uh, former this, Republican National what? Committee what? Chairman Michael what? Steele, what? former what? Lieutenant Governor of Maryland it's, Michael we're, Steele? We're, he's, he's, and here's the thing, like, I, and we just walked to, and here's part of the reason why we were kind of fangirling over Michael fucking Steele is because he's always been a Republican who I really goddamn like. Like, it's, he's we, a likable guy. It's, he's not just like, and here's the thing, I started to get to kind of know Michael Steele, you know, from afar. Well, it, it's, if, if, of course, I'm tweeting this to him later, um, so he's going to watch us fangirling and be like, this is getting <laughs> creepy now, you guys. Like, he's going to be like, you guys know I'm married, right? Like, cut, cut the shit. Stop um, embarrassing yourselves, ladies. Yeah, so it's, but here's the like from from afar we'd watch him and set on like on real time with Bill Maher that was where I first started to get, go like oh, Michael Steele he's he's a Republican who we can be friends with like it's he, he kind of uh, at one point um we're talking about the fact that you know you have to work across the aisle to get anything passed and it's because you know half of your constituents or half the constituents in the country are gonna lean you know left and half are gonna lean right approximately a little more in one election a little less in another election it's gonna go either way but you know you have to compromise to get anything done he's he acknowledged he's like yeah compromise has become a dirty word in politics and I'm like oh someone someone admitted that Michael Steele admit, I love you, Michael Steele. And he's like, so the word I like to use is consensus, so we can come around to a consensus and find out, you know, how we can get legislation passed. I'm like, oh, Michael Steele, you what? steely-eyed wonder, you are good. It's, but it's like he, he was ta he talked about times when he worked with the teachers union in Maryland and got meaningful he legislation was, passed. And that was an interesting moment. Um, it kind of reflected the discussion with the libertarian earlier um but he you know he he told he's he's like look by way of example um i had to work with the teachers union the head yep. of the teachers union during my time and like a lot of republicans don't like that and there was a meeting in my office where they came in and we started to have a meeting and it quickly devolved into <sighs> butting heads and, fish and he was like and i was looking at myself doing this and i'm like no way and I'm paraphrasing here because I don't think he he says no way. Yeah, in kind of a doesn't seem like a no way. Um, and he's like, look, 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 look. We can, okay, we can stand here and yell at each other all we like, but in the end, we both want uh, to do the right thing, and we both want to have something happen. So and we both have. What are the things we both want here? Right. And it's, it was funny because we brought up like my uh, my mom was a teacher for twenty three years. My boyfriend uh, is a professor. I, I'm pretty pro teacher, uh, but you know some of the things that we've put into education are not necessarily pro student or pro teacher. Like all the testing we do, and Michael Steele's like, "Yep, no, I agree with you on that." I'm like, oh, "Michael Steele, you're are, are you sure you're a Republican?" I'm just, I'm just saying, but, <laughs> which we'll get to later. But he, uh, you know, it's, they they managed to pass reform that you know that works for both the Republicans and their crowds. And I'm and I'm sure I'm sure there are people in the state that are still mad at it. But when you're working across the aisle, you have to work with a multitude of opinions. And he understands that, and that's something I can respect with somebody who I don't always agree with. Now. Other like here's the thing like politics have become so divisive. Um, 
and it's turned into a thing where either you agree with me or you're or you're the hor most you're horrible. Hitler. Yeah, it's like everyone who doesn't agree with me is Hitler ha um, by the internet. <laughs> yeah. Like that's that's the book about the internet. Everyone who disagrees is Hitler. I'm just gonna put it in here. If you're retweeting neo-Nazi propaganda, you're a little closer to Hitler than anybody else. It's, I'm just saying the only just, person, just for the record, <laughs> the only person who's who's Hitlerish is Stalin, and everyone else pretty much gets a pass. And, and Pol Pot. We'll we'll yeah. We'll throw those Pol three Pot. together. Everyone else is not Hitler. Donald Trump is not even Hitler. He's he he's got he has a few qualities that we might compare him to Hitler because he's such. He's a little crazy, but has he killed six million Jews? Has he threatened to kill six million Jews? Not yet. Not yet, but you know what? It's, we don't, people are giving him some weird shit to say, so who knows? But moving don't on. Don't give him any more ideas. Is it's, why. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the day is young. Anyways, so, uh, so you know, here's, here's the thing. Michael Steele, uh, when he was working, uh, and, and I love this, um, when when he was working as the head of the RNC, you know, he started uh, saying we have to go into neighborhoods that are different from us, not to try to, you know, bludgeon our ideas into their heads, uh, but because, you know, that's where voters are. So they'd go into minority neighborhoods. They'd go into Brooklyn and the Bronx and say, what are your concerns? We have something for you in the party. We're going to turn into a big tent Republican party. Right. And they, as much as I'm not happy that they won elections uh, because they, yep. they got some people in who I don't agree with, I love the tactic that he said of let's go and talk to the voters because I think that, and that's kind of one of the things that the Hillary camp is doing right now is they're making a really personal campaign and they're talking to people. And that's how, that's how you win hearts and minds. And that's how you talk to voters. But that was, that was the thing that Michael Steele said. We have to go out into the neighborhoods and talk to people who don't feel like we're, we're listening to them. And they talked, they won with minorities yeah. even. And like, that's, and this is the weird thing. This is, this is how weird things are now because that is retail politics. Yeah. That's politicking. That's what, that's like 101. That's what you do. Yeah. That's how Ted Kennedy almost lost to his, his seat to Romney um, when he started taking all that for granted. Yep. And the fact that we're at this point where Michael Steele is like, and then we went to the voters and we actually talked to them to Crazy. ask them about their concerns. The, and the fact that he's expressing that as a like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> it's Terra Terra Nova, uh, is is kind of a weird spot to be in. It's and it's here's the thing he did he did such a good job of kind of building up the Republican Party and but I mean he did that by building up the voters to get on board with the message and that's a beautiful thing and this is where we get to the point in the conversation where we told him hey you know you're on board with compromise. You're on board with these things that the Democrats do, and you're on board with the type of messaging you do. Michael Steele, our buddy, our friend. Come over. Come over. We come over just, to our site. Well, one day, trust me, you'll, it'll feel good. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna feel a little weird at first. But I, and and that was the thing. I'm like, look, it's it's not just. It, and it wasn't until after we had spoken to him that yeah. that was like, why is he still? And I'm like, look, I won't, and, I, and I don't want to. We have room for diverse. It's, Opinions and all the stuff that you were saying about compromise being a dirty word. I, you, you know, that's like, and uh, this was me being a partisan. I'm like, you know, that was kind of mm -hmm. with Bush and the, you're, you know, the terror, you're either with the Tories or against it. You, your party kind of, and he even was like, I know, I, I point, know that was I, our party I, doing that. And I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to quote him from a private conversation and a thing that will get right. him in trouble. Sure. But at one point, he used the word motherfuckers. And we're not going to Just say who, who he used, used it referring yeah. to. But the fact that, number one, you have not lived until you've heard Michael Steele say motherfuckers. Uh, and number motherfuckers. two, like, I love that, here's the thing, I love that you can have these conversations with people with whom you don't agree with. This is why I love yeah. stuff like Politicon. You can sit there watching Michael Steele and John Fugel saying in the fucking hallway having a chit chat. And then you can hear the former head of the RNC say motherfuckers. This is why you should get involved yeah. in politics because it's hilarious. It's, it's the best show fun. on earth. It's um, kept fun oh, by yeah. stuff like that. Oh yeah, it was. It was like, like I said, it was like a geek convention. We were just missing cosplay with somebody dressed no, up like there was Patardis. cosplay. Okay, we, we there just, was cosplay there was no of politicians. We, we just needed somebody dressed up like a TARDIS with a with oh, with, yeah. with uh, um, Trump hair. That's all we needed yeah. for it to be a perfect convention. Next year, I challenge someone to show Idea. up like that. 
I'm just I'm just saying I'm wa- watch it like ten people are gonna show up with that next year because of this video. Yeah, I swear oh, to I God. hope so. It's oh, let it and if you do come tweet tweet at me on Twitter that it's if, where else are you gonna tweet at me? Twitter twit tw- twatter me that it's gonna happen next year. <laughs> oh yeah, dirty um, dirty twatter. Oh, oh yes, there there actually is a website called twat. I think it's uh, twatter.com. So what was so interesting that I found about this was that not not only was this a place where people came together and you know were were on panels and mm-hmm. and you you were Van Jones going off against Ann Coulter, yeah. um, but in the hallway, but the head of the RNC was taking time out of his day yeah. to just discuss policy, and while it wasn't it wasn't even a short conversation. It was a long one. At one point, he even put these on and and started. He started. It's, he now, unlike me, who was doing Trump impressions, uh, he put these on. And we have like I I don't know if we're gonna post the pictures in this video. And there was of course one of me um, next to him stroking his cheek with the creepy Trump hand. <laughs> and you're seeing he's laughing at this all. He's having a great giggle at it. And he's you know. He, I think he like he's like end of the day. I believe in smaller government. I believe in. And he was talking about the things he believed in, and they were kind of the older school Republican things. Right. That I'm like, you know, once upon a time, government worked pretty well when you have like have people battling things out across the aisle and coming to, as he called it, a consensus. And now that's not what we have. It's just it's my way or fuck you, and that's kind of a problem. Like I, as much as these are funny and it's great to make a you know joke every once in a while with them, I wish this wasn't what was happening in politics right now. But I do love that Michael Steele was uh, aware enough of what was going on and, and able to make a joke about it, and able to, to laugh about what was happening in in the party that that he uh, that, that he's, you know, still still wants to be a part of. And, you know, so, or, like, I, I feel like the party is like, you know, it's the, the things that are still basic to it are still, you know, are still hardcore tenets to it are still in his heart and his mind and the party is just right. floated off in another direction the rudder is missing the republicans you guys need a michael Steele. i'm just saying and the thing is we you know we we were like okay the republican tent is is dwindling in in both demographics and 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 ideology and and it's it's kind of shaking itself and tearing itself apart right now and while it may and it probably will, you know, reform stronger and better. Um, come over to maybe. Why don't you come over to our side? Because we have a larger tent for right now for uh, you know ideas, and we have you know kind of a more diverse kind of it's, electorate, and we have a better discipline right now as a party. His, and his answer. His answer was really. I got to give him props for it, and I understand completely. Yeah, and he wants the how he wants to fix the house. Well, it's a, and it's and I get it. He's like, got got to rebuild the house. And I said to him, like, but what if the house is being condemned and it's on fire? Like right now, <laughs> there's like there are like rats with rabies coming out, and the rats have like have herpes on them. Police and like, line do not cross. Volcanoes coming out of the there's desert. There's like there are dead hookers in the house. I mean, it's just it's a bad show at the moment. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. To, it's time to it's time to abandon ship, Michael. And Come nope. on, we 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 have we have tiny baby Trump hands. Like we can we can take a joke. And he even admitted that we have better parties. I'm just it's and he, I'm sure he's fiested a little bit. I'm just our party has better parties. Like it's. it's he, he strikes me as... I don't want to brag, but they are. Like, any time we ran into him in the hallway after that, we kept running into him. We got a big hug from our new friend, Michael Steele. Like, he was I'm like, not a hey. hugger. It's, and you, I was I was okay with it. I, I, I was a hugger. And here's the thing. I, I always... Because, like, you know, I, I, it's, I always I go to shake... I, I I went to shake his hand, and every time he's like, you'd go for the handshake, and then a big hug. Like, he's he's cuddly, and while he's talking to you, he has a hand on your shoulder. But it's not a creep. Like, it's the politician thing. It's not the creepy, like, nah. Yeah, it's, it's like, like there's no a, no creepiness. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's like, let's clarify. There, there was no creepiness for Michael Steele. Yeah. We can, he can... He can hang out with us, and no, it's not, like... But, yeah, it's just... This is something I've learned just from all the different types of people I talk to when I'm going to conventions. There are, um, like, you you get a huge number of people who you disagree with on a lot of things, but everyone, it comes down to the fact that you're always going to be talking to a human being, and the stuff that you see about them just from their political opinions, you miss so much about the personality and the, the human behind it. And we, we got to see a little bit about Michael Steele, the uh, the, the guy, like the, the, the person. Oh, here's one that... Um, 
that I asked him that I that that I kind of enjoyed his answer to that it was from the perspective of him kind of uh, commanding the party, so to speak, that I think is not privileged information. I asked, you know, if you see a bad candidate running um, that you think is going to be right. damaging in their seat, you know, that you think they're going to say things that are fucked up. Like, he remembered, do you guys remember Christine O'Donnell? Uh, the one who was like, I was oh. a witch. Oh, tell upon... the Christine O'Donnell story. Just just to remind you guys, Christine O'Donnell, she was running, I think, from Delaware for a, uh, a Senate seat. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, she was like, I was a witch back in the 80s. And of course, she was kind of a crazy tea party. Um, yeah. And at one point, uh, Michael Steele's like, Michael Steele did not put up with shit when he was running the party, and I liked that. Well, and and he made he made the distinction, which uh, takes me back to McKinley's days uh, of you you I do not come see. He's like Rince Priebus is now you know going flies. to see Trump. Oh no. no, no, no! Trump the candidates come see the head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like that's he, he's that's a stone cold badass move, and I love yeah. that. But here's okay. this was a this was a thing that. I asked him that I just, I wanted to know, I'm like, is it ever better to lose a seat when you have a dreadful candidate running um, and say, okay, we'll get it next time? Or do you run that candidate uh, and just hope for the best and, you know, put your, put all of your will behind them and put all of your effort behind them, uh, even knowing that they could fuck things up? He's like, you always, um, you, you always run the candidate and put your support behind them because even if you disagree with that one candidate, you have the Republican, you know, you, you have your party machine. I'm like, that's, that's an interest. I don't know. You if, have your beachhead. Like, I look at that and go, ugh. Like, that's, that's why I'm looking at this with Donald Trump going, I do wonder, like, because with that insight from Michael Steele, who used to, you know, run this bitch, like, what he's thinking when, when he sees, you know, Trump out there, uh, you know, tiny little Trump hands, uh, just thinking, you know, this this is the best, this is what, you know, this is what the American people or the Republican electorate, you know, wanted. Um, and now we have to like, it, it, we have to run them under that thought of let's, it's always better to get a win and there's going to be machinery behind them. But man, he's going to have to do diplomatic things. Like you dance with them. What brung ya is, yeah. is I think how Molly Ivins described it in, in her book on Bush. It's like, and I, and I uh, somewhere deep down uh, there has to like, I, I don't I don't want to try to figure out what's in someone's brain. So people like Michael Steele who are very like and people who are like I have like I said friends who are hardcore Republican politicos who know he has the R next to his name. He has to okay. That's I'll give you that. He's a rip it's the same way, you know, I you know, I have there are people who complain, well, Bernie Sanders only became a Democrat yeah. in order to run. Like uh, you know okay, what had the had the D next to it, he's a Democrat. He has the D next to his name, so he's a representative of the party. right now of the Democratic Party, even even when all this is happening. And the the interesting thing is, um, looking at you know, after after what he said and then comparing that with the never Trump movement that some Republican politicians are planning to take to the floor of the convention. And that's that's the crazy thing is that um, there are people who are avoiding the convention altogether yeah. this year. There are companies like Google and Coca-Cola who have pulled out of funding it's both Apple conventions. As well. Apple. I, I don't because, know if Apple pulled out of uh, of the Democratic one, but they definitely pulled out of pulling. The I RNC. know that there were some who pulled out of the Democrat of the DNC because of the of the national convention because well we have to pull out of the Republican oh, convention shit. because Trump's brand is so toxic, and because of fairness we yeah. are feel obliged to do that Holy here too. That's so just a crazy the thought. RNC is getting uh, less don't less you know liquidity from that mm -hmm. and there are people who are like nope i am not going to the convention yeah which is the the place to be and oh, yeah. so i i hear him saying like okay you you run with whoever with whoever you're running and you do your best and i'm like wow i get that he feels that way and i'm watching the exact opposite happen now granted the never trump movement is not going to it's not gonna work it's not going to work because you're kind of if if you if you did this is what the voters decided and if you decide to subvert the will of the voters it's and especially go. those ones you're <laughs> good luck i'm i'm gonna stay i wouldn't go to the convention either it's, I, it's gonna be a gallagher show i'm gonna get under its harp okay yeah, yeah. and so Just so that was really interesting to, uh, oh that's good they're gonna be protected yes 
<laughs> and he's in his Rough Rider outfit, so he will... So, um, oh, yeah. in one breath, there was the word motherfuckers, and we're not going to say who it was referring to. <clears throat> uh, and then there's another breath of saying, uh, you know, you run who you have, and there's going to be the machinery behind it. And I'm like, the problem with Trump is that you cannot give him a script. And I mean, I, I feel for... On some level, I feel for people like Michael Steele who were like, my party got away from me. But then I look at all the other people who were like, this is great when the Sarah Palins of the world showed up and they were like, look, we have someone who's energizing the base. I'm like, you know what you're doing? You're you're letting you're letting the inmates run the asylum. Yeah. This is not good. This is not this is not smart business either. I mean, as much as William F. Buckley was William F. Buckley, mm. it's not this is not the party. At, at least he at least that was from an era when intellectualism yeah. and the discussion of ideas was something that was happening in that party as well. It's and like, now it's once, a well, reactive, it's a, it's in a reactive yeah. phase. Like the, the James Carville, Mary Madeline uh, marriage wouldn't happen today. Like once upon a time, Dude. and I mean, it still, still happens sometimes, not as much. Like Republicans and Democrats in Washington used to, at least these are the rumors that I hear up in, you know, out here in La La Land. Um, I hear of the times. I, I hear of the times. The and they, old times. It's like they used to, they used to go to dinner parties together. They used to hang out. And now it's like, it's a really, it's, it's a much more divided DC, at least as, at least as they'll have you believe on the news. Like, but it's like, you know what? If you guys can, can talk and it's like, and, and here's, here's the other thing. I would hope that all those people who we elect and our tax dollars are paying for you to do your jobs. Oh, <coughs> we wouldn't. We, we need a ninth Supreme Court judge. Moving on. Um, I, uh, I, I'm just saying. I hope that y'all remember um, that that America is composed of a lot of people that don't agree on politics and are still friends and work together. So maybe y'all could do a little bit more working together. That's that's all I'm saying, and that's, that's kind of crazy. And that's kind of why I liked Michael. St that's kind of why we're still yeah. sitting here in awe of Michael Steele a week later because he's like you had to work together, even if even if you don't agree on everything, even if you don't get everything you want. It it helps to just see the human side of things. Yeah. So that kind of brings me to why I why I won't make fun of Lindsey Graham anymore. There is a, <gasps> there is a... My, my love for Graham now. It's, I've been loving I the Lindsey Graham fuck it tour of 2016. Yeah, I, I gotta say, when you have nothing left to lose. But <laughs> the guy, the guy is on the opposite end of the spectrum from me. I, I am not, I am, I'm not on board with his policies, but there is, I don't know if you've seen the clip of him talking about Joe Biden. I haven't. Oh, we're going to sit down and geek out to this later. It's... We're going to sit down and geek out to this later. Um... <laughs> you have a look on your face. They've served to get, well, they're old school, you know, they, yeah. they were from the era of Ted Kennedy and whatnot. Yeah, they, they, they've and been there. And they, uh, it's, it's on the road with, so it's basically on the road with the candidates oh, or, or whatever. And it's, it's a, it's a handheld camera, him in the backseat of the car bawling because Joe Biden's son has died. Oh my God. Holy shit. And he's, the first thing he says is, if you don't like Joe Biden, well, there's something wrong with you. And I have a he goes, he goes. They're right over there. We can cut this. We can, it's, we can oh, it's okay. People can see this. All right. That's fine. Holy so shit. So we'll, we'll play the clip later, but um, oh it God. is the most moving tribute to anything. And Holy he says, shit. we don't agree on much. We don't see eye to eye all the time, but he is the nicest, flat out, the nicest person you'll ever meet. Wow. And he called me up after, you know, I had my service and he... And we talked, and and it was after Bo had died, and all he cared about was making sure his grandkids were okay, and wow. and all this stuff. And he's just weeping. Jesus. And like Biden's pain is his own. Yeah. They're at the end of the day, they're people, and I think we forget about that when we're arguing. The, That's these... the thing. The cynicism. I can't be cynical about that, and if I can't be cynical about Lindsey Graham now. Oh. That's something that was I have no it's, right to be anymore. And I mean, here's the thing: there are, there are candidates that I feel like I can still be cynical about, and it's when I feel like sure. they're putting on a show constantly for the American people. It's easy to be cynical about it, and it's easy to look at this and go, "I don't think you care about 
the end result of you affecting the lives of Americans or affecting long-term policy or affecting, this is going to change shit for people. This is not just a job. This is a duty and a responsibility. So when I see- You said duty. I said duty. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna make a poop joke and then we're gonna make a Donald Trump joke. Uh, but when I see somebody, I mean, I'm, as much as I joke about, you know, I respect Sarah, jokingly saying I respect Sarah Palin for saying, fuck it, I'm cashing in. Like, that's not what politics are supposed to be for. There, there are moments where Lindsey Graham is crying about Joe Biden's son because even though these guys disagreed, uh, and even though I, I find a lot of Lindsey Graham's opinions repugnant, um, man, that's a person who worked across the aisle or, or, you know, worked with a friend of his who he vehemently disagreed with for years. Yeah. Like that's, like, I, when I, when I go to the things like this, I, you know, we meet people who we disagree with and we see the human side of them. Like, yeah. and it's, Michael was at the end of the day, Michael Steele was like, I'm going back to my hotel. And I'm like, isn't it nice? I'm like, cause I travel so much for work. I'm like, it's nice to go back and hide in the hotel when you're on the road and nobody can find you in your little <laughs> cave. He's like, oh, you travel. I'm like, and so we were just, I got to chit chat and find the little human moments, the little things that all connect us in the universe. Crying in, in his, the backseat of his car, Jesus Christ. And it was, it, it, he was just not ashamed of it. He's like, look, it's, and it was, which was refreshing. And it was, because uh, he gets made fun of for certain certain things, even by the left. And here's here's where we bring in a little bit of like, you know, it's a little bit sex. Um, I don't know the word for it, but kind of sexism. He's made he's made fun of a lot for having certain uh, not being as seemingly masculine as other people. And if you can sit there and discuss how your, how your co-worker's best friend's pain is your own, someone who you vehemently disagree Holy with shit. on top of that, but you work together and at loggerheads at this, with at the same time, um, that's fucking ballsy vaggy, you know? That's, that is, that is awesome. Dude, those, those are some, those are, I was about to say, he's... I, I don't know if I want to say that he's got balls or if he's got ovaries because those can take a pounding. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying <laughs> I know from experience. But as the joke goes, Lindsey Graham, I, I, I if ever we're in the same part of town, either a bourbon or a, uh, I, I'm I'm a diet coke addict. Um, one of those is on me. Uh, but that's uh, Jesus Christ, man. But like that's that's what I uh, that's what I dig about politics. Is there it's, it's and I'll say this about like like I said, I do science. Um, it's behind every good science story, there's always a human story. And I think it's the same thing in politics. Um, it's like with, with science, we're always trying to, like it's, what's happening in Flint is both a story of a, a, of a science thing, of a molecule lead that's horribly hurt people. And it's gonna take scientists and engineers uh, to, to find a way to fix this in a timely fashion. And it's gonna take politicians to figure out how to uh, how to get the resources there, but it's always a human story that drives both the science and the politics. And whenever people people are going to look back on this era in history, and I love this because I mean you've you have, nah. you have uh, it's like it's it's like we can they're going to be like one day people are going to look back on this era like we look back on different eras and go what the fuck was happening <laughs> and like there there are going to be all these human stories that drive it yep and i, I love going to stuff like this because we get to see the we get to see our other little humans outside of their zoos you get to they, see and you get they to crawl see how of, they came to their conclusions they, they crawl well. they crawl out of their zoo that is washington yeah. and, we, and we get to go okay what's what's your story and it's we uh and sometimes who let you out <laughs> <laughs> oh there's a zoo in alaska that still needs sarah palin to be there anyways so, so yeah, uh, there was an interesting, it was interesting talking to Michael Steele as well uh, about, you know, um, being there and finding common ground with people and, and seeing each other as human. And the guy to my left, who had been kind of like, you know, chatting, uh, you know, leaned in and he's like, so, you know, huh, this is really something. And I'm like, I know, right? And it wasn't very far into just pleasant small talk when he just leans right over and goes, see, I'm libertarian and we have all the answers. <sighs> and it was like, and I, I, I looked at him and I'm like, and we were doing so well <laughs> <laughs> because it felt like he was breaking the rules. You know, like I get, I get, um, yeah, the rules of this passionate discussion. 
the rules of this, of these com- like rules of this com- this type of convention they're not rules they're but not rules the, the the rule is is that oh we're discussing our, our viewpoints without telling you you suck if right. you don't agree with it right and 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 we have all the answers so you know but that's kind of a libertarian attitude but that's and that kind of and that was that was what he led with you know no, more people don't know that it's the right way is because our our policy it's never really been tried you and know, I'm we, like, there was an error before child labor laws. I'm just uh, saying. I told him, really, you know, come, don't, don't discount your successes. And he's like, what do you mean? And I said, come on, Somalia is a perfect. I mean, if <laughs> libertarian, yeah, I mean, you have no government to speak. You have no government regulations. You have no enforcement of any regulations that are on the book. Wealthy businessmen come in and do what they want. It's the free market. And in, 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 that, in that free market span where you have companies dumping toxic waste onto the shorelines of these, of these, no, no, go with no, me. No, no, I'm no, starting no. to see there's, the light. No, 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 there's not what I wanted. There's when not- you have these companies that are, that are you know, dumping toxic waste onto this shoreline and and poor fishermen have to you know turn to anything else to make a fucking living to piracy. feed their families piracy and warlords but piracy that's, is not piracy is not anarcho capitalism that is that is that Austrian is a bootstrapping entrepreneur something. my friend so own your successes don't disown it and and by this time he's like <laughs> and he's like Somalia really and I'm like absolutely I mean come on own your success and he's like and his response was I bet you're a Hillary Clinton supporter aren't you and I'm like oh I gave it away giving a shit about people <laughs> And his response was, you know, and, and we're upping it at this point. And he's like, so you have no principles. And I'm like, oh, evidently. And, uh, you know, he started in again. And I'm just like, talk to the hand. We're done. And 30 seconds. 30 seconds later, we were both like, I'm so sorry. Not, oh, my God. I can't believe this is like, this we, were, we broke the rules. We, were, we broke the rules. And we're so, I, I'm, I did that. And he's like, no, I, I, I couldn't, I shouldn't have come out. I was way condescending. We need I'm to like, rock, but paper, I was condescending too. Out. Yeah. And it was. It was this weird, we, awesome, we, like, oh boy, I really fucked it's up. Like, I didn't, I didn't mean to. This I'm wasn't sorry. intended to be the comment section <laughs> on on a post. Uh, this isn't why we're here. And he's like, hey, you know, I, can we start over? My name's, you know, and, and I'm like, yeah. And he's a libertarian mayor from a small town. I don't remember the town's name. I don't so, remember. His so what name. we're saying is, in a few years, he's going to be the next uh, VP pick for for exactly. uh, random guy that that <laughs> hung out with Anna. We know they're going to pluck you out of obscurity because we're sure you have about as much ex- more experience than Sarah Palin and you seemed better spoken than her. Ah. You definitely seemed better. There was like subject predicate. Um, <laughs> and and it was a, And they seemed to all agree too. It was a relief. It was absolutely yeah. a relief to pardon me have that uh, like yeah. oh oh that, god let's let's x that, that out. Moment of uh, do over. Do over. Yeah, and and we left that hall um warmly wishing each other well and yeah. talking about politics and it it was it was nice to get yeah. back to good yep it's let's uh, let's let's shall we do a quick wrap up on lady justice yeah, lady oh, Parts justice let's. league so lady Parts justice league they uh, loudly and proudly and this is this is mra's comment below where i will uh, <laughs> promptly ignore your comments cuz i really don't give a shit we have um, a very special folder for your comments it's it's called the delete folder it's it's my trash <laughs> it's the tr- i i put them right into my pussy uh, and I, and i use them i grind them up and use them as tampons and flush it all out it's the oh absorbent. yeah it's you're yeah, you're welcome for that visual. It's it's I'm I think there are men going oh I'm like I'm sorry did a pussy freak you out so that's why Lady Parse Justice League is around it's because they haven't seen a pussy for a while anyways yeah. um, this is why we have Lady so, Parse Justice League um, founded by Liz Winstead co-creator of The Daily Show and it's her and a bunch of amazingly hilarious kick-ass comment uh, co- comics because me stutter pretty today uh that get out and do some you know the the humor isn't all pussy jokes i mean they occasionally get a dick joke in there and a tank joke because who isn't into that um equal time and you know they they talk about a lot of they do some really funny stuff and they also do some uh kick-ass activism uh to try to make sure that things like planned parenthood uh clinics and uh independently operating uh um women's uh health 
health clinics get the support that they need because they often don't. And there's been a lot of legislation to make sure that people don't have access uh, to the health care that they you, or that women you may not have known about that. It wasn't really well covered. Yeah, or no, there no were one no said hearings. Yeah, it's so... Oh, I'm sorry. I meant exactly opposite of what I said. (laughs) Sorry. So anyways, they they do a lot of really nice activism, try to get the word out. Um, And here's the thing. I've been to a Planned Parenthood once. Um, I was getting... I was just going in for a birth control type checkup. I... It's... And and I mean, I, I say this... Half as a joke, or mostly as a joke, just to rib people, because I know people are gonna go. <gasps> she said that. Um, I, I'm almost sad that I've never had an abortion. I think if you need birth control, you should be able to get it. But you know, not that I need to justify anything, anyways. But like, yeah, I'm like, I look at her, and go, I'm not the woman who's yelling at me. I'm not pregnant. Uh, it's the next thing is we can help you find another job. I'm like, you don't go in there just if you're going to work or if you need <laughs> like, or if you need birth control. There's more than one. <laughs> Options like I think people don't realize we're a protest line and an unemployment office. Exactly, I'm like there are like we can do job placement. It's like abortion is about like somewhere between one and three percent, I believe, of what Planned Parenthood uh, covers monetarily, and zero federal funds go towards abortion services. Thanks, Henry Hyde. Mm, Anyways, so. The next thing, so after I tell her, I don't work in here, she goes, we can help you find a better lifestyle. At which point I'm like, what, enjoying my sex life? Bah, crazy, and walked into the clinic. I get in there, they have, you have to go through a metal detector. A metal detector, because they've had so many uh, bomb threats and so many people that threatened to come in and shoot up the place. And they have a, an armed security guard. I'm just curious, gentlemen, who, again, I'm sure you're sitting there talking about, you know, hashtag not all men and talking about, uh, you know, the fact that, and I get it, like, there, there's going to be someone in the comments who I'm sure says, men are raped too, and this is true. There's a huge, huge problem with prison rape. I, I implore you uh, to please go to Congress and Senate and try to get legislation that will get better uh, training for guards to make sure that these behaviors are sussed out. This and is how you maybe. do this, not yelling at me for talking about the fact that we need, uh, that, that we need the, the, the fever pitch of this to go down a little bit. But moving on. And maybe um, only bring that, maybe bring that up in more circumstances and at more times than just in response to someone talking about talking about this. To, about their own sexual assault or talking I, about a women's clinic i'm just saying i don't know moving that's on all, that's all i'm that's all I'm, I'm that's all i'm suggesting i'm saying it's a problem but i'm saying there are other problems too so i think um, they got it yeah, it, yeah. so anyways uh, how many of you guys who've gone in for a prostate exam uh, have ever needed to go through a metal detector did they first? think you were smuggling something that was metallic in there uh, possibly something that could move a projectile i'm just saying oh my it's i i don't yeah so that that's that that's the experience going into one of these places and it's because of this crazy fever pitch uh nutty set of uh thoughts that people have about the fact that abortion is just you know so so wrong that it's like take you know doing what and you want with legal by the way doing what Let's you want with your yeah. doing what you want with your body is so bad that we should kill you and a doctor for it yeah it's like it's there was an old joke from george carlin uh it's they're they're against killing a baby but they're killing doctors no it's we can get into the ethics of abortion all day long but i don't have the fucking time because eventually i'm gonna have to take a big ruddy shit um which seems more important than arguing abortion on the internet the Um, rates of deaths from uh unsafe abortions do however go up yeah so and i'm pretty sure that if you you know want to call yourself pro-life with no uh moral um, problems there um might want to take that into account. Yeah. So, you know, if you if you want to prevent abortions, which I think that's a good idea. I, I, so I think, you know, like, like prevent abortions from happening. Promote uh, safe sexual practices. Because, I mean, people aren't going to stop fucking. This is just a thing that hasn't happened. Like, we've been, the reason uh, that, that I know this, we're all here. We're alive. We are a successful species at fucking. 16 is about the average age at which people start having sex. And that's been the case for a long time. This is not new. This is not hookup culture. This is how these things have been going for a long ass time. Uh, So, you know, places like Planned Parenthood, given that 97% of their uh, of their dollars are spent on things other uh, than abortion. It's going towards reproductive services. It's going sometimes pap they go- smears. 
Uh, sometimes even going towards women who are pregnant for regular checkups. Sometimes going toward men. Oh yeah, and sometimes and their health. Oh yeah, because men, you you guys need to get checked out too. Uh, so unless that protester line can give me a really good pap smear. Yeah, it's like I mean I like I said I've never been in there for uh, for an abortion service. Just saying, uh, but you know if you're this these are all these wonderful things that if you are pro life I would hope that you support your local Planned Parenthood clinic because they are doing more to prevent abortions uh, than they are to promote people to get them. Uh, and it's you're occasionally going to see a, an edited video from a nut job who uses gummy babies to say, look, they're selling baby parts, uh, which all these videos have been debunked. I love what Lady Parts Justice League does because they try to make this approachable with humor. The legislators in that state couldn't uh, bring themselves to say vagina. They're trying to legislate all the things that happen around my around around my my personal amusement park, and they couldn't say the they name couldn't of name it. it. I'm I'm and like they you know, requested that it instead be called lady, lady parts. parts. I'm like which which lady parts? I mean this I, I this is one of my lady parts. I but I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying this but is one of my fa these are two of these my are favorites. Two exactly. <laughs> um, we can I work these out. It's, I was about to say, it's one of my favorite ones. Nice. Anyways, but that's... So, so they started calling themselves Lady Parts Justice League because of that, and I thought it was uh, hilarious and brilliant. A very poignant, funny uh, uh, piece that nobody who's like, this is too politically correct, nobody would have complained about. Uh, just saying, here are my experiences, and made it, you know, really funny. One of the things, because my brother is trans, um, and, you know, I grew up with a you know, someone who presented as a sister and is now male. And, like, hearing, this is what I love about comedy, is that it brings us together. Um, and it, it shows, it gets us, it gets us to have all these common experiences. Yeah. Um, this comic came out, and not a lot of people can, you know, relate. Because, you know, the, tr the population of trans people, very small. Uh, but, you know, they're becoming more vocal. We're seeing them more now, which is yeah. wonderful, because we're getting to be a more accepting society. Um, and this, they're having their moment. It's wonderful. Um, but I grew up with, like, I I saw my brother come out first as a lesbian and then eventually come out again as a trans man. And he's finally, he's gone through hormone therapy, still, you know, going through it. And he's, mm -hmm. he went through puberty. Ah, it was great. Uh, but it was hearing this. But what about second puberty? Second puberty. Oh, yes. But he, <laughs> but breakfast, what about second breakfast? Um, but it's, Brexit, what about, no. <laughs> no, it's no Brexit. Um, anyways, <laughs> but that's another podcast. Um, but here was a, but he, having this comic that was part of Lady Parse Justice League, come out and say, yep, I, I came out twice. Uh, I was like, oh my God. I, it, I hadn't heard somebody else say that. Like it was, it was just a wonderful experience that I wouldn't have, like, I wouldn't have had someone in that room making me laugh and making me feel like I was, I was a little less alone in the yeah. world. And, uh, you know, from, uh, from, from saying, okay, this is the common experience that everyone's family or that other people's families have had, um, while they're, you know, while someone's figuring out, uh, their gender identity. And it was like, it was brought together with so much love and so much, you know, I guess, grace and humor. And I'm just, I'm thankful that I've met this group of kick-ass comics who, who make the subject, you know, it's a little in your face, but it's, and they make it so funny and Comedy so fantastic. in your face? No. It's like, you know, but if you're yeah. if, if you're sitting here going, I don't know if I like this, go check out, like, if you see that Lady Parts Justice League is going to be in your area, go check out a show. You, if nothing else, you're going to laugh, and that's a powerful thing. And more of that. And more oh, yeah. of, like, you know, making it more normal to hear about the experiences mm -hmm that other people haven't had yeah and especially given through comedy like oh god yeah fuck. it's it's like this is it's it's why i do what i do i figure if i can make you get a little bit of science in your day by, by coupling it with a dick joke it's good and like this is <laughs> and i mean god lady Parts justice league they're 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 all up in the pussy jokes i remember back in the day when craig kilborn and liz winstead were on the daily show oh my god like, i remember and I don't even she remember. doesn't look any different. Yeah, she's she's basically ageless. <laughs> I I believe she is. I, I think she's uh, drinking the blood of unbaptized children. No, just Winstead. She's she's just bought a few fetal tissue things from. Nice. She's bought a few barrels of fetal tissue from uh, Planned Parenthood. Please Great don't job. repeat that. We're a joke. Uh, God, it's, this is this is a, this is this that was a that joke. Was, that was a um, joke. God, someone's gonna tweet that. I'm sure. For Republican but... politicians, a joke is when you have a setup and a punch. Sorry. Um, it's it's so one, Google it. It's it's somewhere yeah. on Google. I promise. Google is this thing on the internet. That... <laughs> 
but um, <laughs> but yeah, it's they did. Yeah, she's such a. Oh yeah, and they they had such a wonderful oh, show, and they have, and it's I even bought, bought a t shirt that says uh, Lady Parts Justice League on it. They were wonderful. If you have a chance, go check them out. And even if you're sitting here going, I'm not so sure about this feminism thing. Do you like humor? Do you like giggling? You're gonna see a bunch of kick-ass comics. Raunchy, thing. raunchy humor, giggling. Oh. Awesome. It's I'm I it's can can you tell I like dirty jokes? Go to my website and check out. If, I'm I'm just saying go to my website and please please don't leave hate mail. And because if you do, I'm gonna laugh at it. Um, it's your your rage fuels me. Anyways, um, <laughs> but that's uh that was that was how good it was. And I'm just saying, I I think that if we keep denying that we ever use these services, we're gonna keep shaming people who do. Cause, and, and it's a ridiculous thing because how many people do you know with 20 fucking kids? The Duggars, and we all know what happened there. But moving on, mm. uh, it's people are using birth control. Right. We need healthy, acceptable places where people who are low income can, can, uh, get, can access it. And we need regular places where it's accessible. Uh, Planned Parenthood, great place for that. Um, so they need our love right. and our support. Lady Press Justice League is, is being, I love that they're doing some vocal activism uh, for it. More vocal activism for uh, places like this. And please go and check them out and help support them. Agreed. So I could rant and on that for another two hours, that, but their panel, <laughs> their their panel, I have to say was was because I I have not seen their show yet. I am going to rectify that, um, but their panel was was pretty wonderful, and it was very much in that spirit of um, being. I mean, everybody there there was nobody I am willing to wager real money on um, who was at that event who was not a political nerd yeah. and passionate one at that and they came out with you know with their with their comedy and with their in your face kind oh, yeah. of thing and that was one of many many things and often uh what how did that and that was you know just one thing that was there um amongst a whole diverse plethora of viewpoints, yeah. many of which were diametrically opposed to them. Oh, yeah. And we all were oh. geeking out together. And that was so much fun. And Beautiful. I think what helps, honestly, and it, it, gets, it gets back to the whole, at least from my point of view, people had fun there. Yeah. And it was such a fun place to be. B, and to oh, see yeah. all these all these people, many of whom I disagree with politically, they could, meet people who I disagreed with politically, and they could crack a joke, and they could crack a joke, and they could take a joke. Oh, that's more just as important. And they except Sarah Palin. Except Sarah Palin. <clears throat> and and to see this, to see all of us there, it I gotta say, it it felt like Comic Con. Um, and there were aspects of it that were like the cosplaying, um, but it it just whatever whatever political stripe you are, no matter how passionately you adhere to it, it's a fun place to be, oh, yeah. and it's fun to meet people who are diametrically opposed to most of what you stand for, and find and out. get along, and. Yeah, and find out that there there's a there's a human back there, yeah, and that you might just get along, and it's, yeah, it's and it was that was kind of the groovy part of it. Uh, so that was the end of the day. It was wonderful. We got to see see a lot of people and uh, learn some things about the humans behind the behind the talking heads, and maybe just maybe a little bit about ourselves. Oh yeah, and we're hoping, and we're still we're still hoping the that Michael Steele, know. we're still hoping Michael Steele will come over. I, you know what? I'm gonna be happy if he stays over there, just that we have a voice of reason. It, it, I would rather what? have the Huntsmans and Steels of the world. I, I'm just saying, it's in in 2024. Uh, you know, after Hillary Clinton has served her two terms, right? Uh, you know, I I wouldn't say no to a Huntsman Steel uh, candidacy or Steel Huntsman, whichever one. I, yeah. It's, it's I, I don't know if I don't know who's going to be voting or running from the Democrat side, but man, it's just to plant this little fucking seed out there. <clears throat> Michael Steele, the, Michael Steele, who I'm going to be tweeting this to later. Man, uh, you and a uh, you, and, you John, and John Huntsman would were, make a really fine team. That's that's a sexy motherfucking political ticket. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just just I'm just, 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 just policy wonk wise. Oh, 
Uh, oh, I, you know, a diplomat and the former I, head of the RNC. I could. I'm not saying that I would be a swing vote, Ooh. but you might just you might just turn us. Mm. It's I. You might just turn me into a Michael Steele. <laughs> you and John Huntsman. I'm. I'm just saying it could happen. It could happen. It's so that's that's that I think that's I think that was can, Politicon 2016. That was Politicon, that was Politicon 2016. 2016. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, again, I'm Anna Maltese, and and, and I'm Yvette Dontremont. I run Cybabe.com. Uh, come hang out with me over there sometime. Come hang out with me and come hang out with us, and definitely come hang out with us at Politicon uh, 2017. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. It's thank you guys so much. Bye. <laughs>